All right, everyone. Welcome to the January 11th, 2023 meeting of the Historic District Commission. Um, I would like to uh, introduce the members. Um, we have Dan Brown. Good evening. Yep. And we have Brian. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Should I let him show? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. New guy. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Margo Doring. Hello. Martin Ryan, what's the matter with me? Uh, I'm John Wyckoff. And this is Nick Cracknell. Good evening. And then we have Rich Blaylock, City Council Rep. Good evening. Reagan Rudig. Good evening. And David Adam. Good evening. Um, I'm looking forward to read. I'm not seeing it in here. I don't have an agenda like that. I'll get it. Okay. So the board's actions in these matters has been deemed to be quasi-judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue shall be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived. Um, there is a, a little something that I would like to discuss before we get going on our one administrative approval. Okay, you probably know what this is, Nick? Probably not. Okay. Um, in looking through the overlay districts in our historic district uh, here, at the very beginning of it, um, one thing that starts off, the historic district is established to preserve architectural and historic resources of the city to foster its architectural and historic character, its sense of place, to conserve property values, to strengthen the local economy, and to promote the use of the district for education, pleasure, and welfare. And then it again repeats that um, on the same page, to promote the district's contribution to the education, pleasure, and welfare. So what, that is something that we haven't uh, talked about as a uh, as a task that we could take on um, if somebody were so inclined. And um, it, it, the education, and that's what I don't quite understand. Um, what they or whoever wrote this ordinance expects from us uh, to do as far as educating people. So I'm just putting this out there now so that in the future, if somebody wants to take this on, we could have a little kind of a subcommittee or something very similar to that. And then uh, this is something that we bump into all the time, exemptions from certificate of approval. And number nine <clears throat> is placement or replacement of ground-mounted mechanical or electrical equipment, including gen a generator where the equipment is located behind the structure and is not in public view. And all the ductwork or equipment feeds are located in the building's interior or immediately adjacent to the equipment. So there again, this is something uh, goes back to our kind of general back of the house um, idea that we've had but um, here it is in writing. Um, they're saying a generator, but they could just as easily be a condenser um, for these mini splits. Um, I just thought that I would read that and something for us to keep in mind when somebody has got a condenser mounted on the back of the building. Okay, Nick, um, we now have administrative approvals. I'll share my screen. So we only have one administrative approval tonight that, that came in, and that's 44 Humphreys Court. This is the project we uh, approved for the chimney and the rear condenser last week and agreed to let the applicant come back to deal with the emergent issue of the egress window being required in one of the attic windows. This uh, was submitted as part of that request and requirement last week. So there are images in your uh, file in the application showing the, the two attic windows. The question I was going to ask the applicant seeing, I think he's in the back of the room, Jay Pruitt. 
is whether you're requesting both windows be replaced, and if they're both being replaced, presumably only one of them's an egress window and the other would be a double hung, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's up to you. I, I can do them both so they look identical. I can do one one casement egress and I can do one double hung. Won't they look identical unless they're yeah, open? Yeah, they, they will. I mean, it's going to be, uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to tell. Plus, they're about four stories up and facing <laughs> the side of the house, so they're going to be. Uh, no, they're, 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 are they one over ones or two over ones? Two over ones. Two over ones, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I suppose if uh, let others decide it might be safer if they're both egress windows, so you don't have to guess which one actually swivels, but I leave that to everyone else. I mean, I would say if they, I mean, they look pretty identical on the exterior, and I'd be happy with either. I don't know if the, um, the family has a preference as to whether how they're using it, if maybe they, for safety reasons, want one that only opens as a double hung and the other. I don't I, I don't think but, it makes any so difference. I, I would be fine with basically. I would be fine leaving them up, leaving it up to them. Wouldn't it look mm -hmm. odd on a spring day if they go to open a window and one is a double hung and one is a casement? So, again, you can leave it up to them, but I think uh, it would look odd. Anybody else? It's going to look odd anyway. No, no. If they both went out. Um, th what I would like to say is that um, the if you leave one of the windows, it'll have that old storm window on it, and that will be totally different. No, but, I, I was sensing they were going to replace both windows. Yes. But one <clears throat> might be double hung and one might be casement. That's correct. Yeah. Do you have a preference? I don't. I, I mean, I, if it were my house, I would do them both as egress yeah uh casements just because they'll uh, yeah <laughs> it's easy um it, you know it's that's probably the higher cost option but i thought that matters it could be doing a double hung in a casement would be less money but it's sort of irrelevant okay just specify what you want to do they're either both casement or they're whatever they want or they're one or the other. <laughs> Somebody. Make I a would like to see them both casement. That I'd like to suggest sense. that they both be casements. Yeah. They'll match. They'll trim out easier. There seems to be a teeny bit of uh, uh, cost difference, but the applicant suggests that's not an issue. Second. Okay. Second. All righty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Thank you. There you go. You have it. So we jump right into certificate of approval extension request. This is the petition of PNF Trust of 2013 owner for properties located at 266, 278 State Street and 84 Pleasant Street, wherein permission is requested to allow a second one-year extension of the certificate of approval originally approved on February 5th, 2020 for exterior renovations to an existing structure, 278 State Street, and new construction to an existing structure, a four to five story addition at 266-270 State Street. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 77, 78, 79, 80, lies within the character district four, downtown overlay and historic district. So who is here to make this presentation? Yet again. Good evening, Chair, Commission members. My name is Michael Keene. I'm the architect for the project, Michael Keene Architects in Newmarket. So, um, we are back before you asking for a second extension. We're pretty much in the same boat as we were at this point last year. <clears throat> the project is, um, has hit a, a, a stone wall in that we can't find a location for a uh, transformer to provide power for the site. We've um, tried several uh, properties adjacent to us and in the surrounding area without success. Um, there's still one option uh, for an off-site transformer that we are trying to pursue. There may be one option for uh, an on-site transformer that 
has minor changes, would result in minor changes to the building, which would bring us back for those. Um, if we fall short on either one of those options, then we'd have to start looking for some place on site, which of course would require uh, much more redesign. Our hope at this point is that if you grant us the extension and we're able to minimize the impact on the approved design, that we'd be able to come back as an amended site plan and not have to start with a blank piece of paper. Um, if you don't, then I guess we'll just have to start again with the beginning. Even if it's the same design, we just have to start over with a, uh, with a new application and show you whatever the, uh, <clears throat> whatever the changes might be. We have looked at what the, uh, preliminarily what the implications of having that transformer on site would be um, as the dominoes started to fall in terms of other land use uh, approvals that we have in place, um, uh, how, unit count, unit size, return on investment in the property, uh, access to parking and things like that. Um, just haven't gone far enough into it yet to be able to present you with any other proposals but we are still hoping that there might be an opportunity to land this thing someplace off-site and be able to come back with substantially the same design as you had approved. Um, so this was approved in two parts. In 2020, it was approved for the three parcels on um, just on State Street. In 2021, we had come back with a, uh, a proposal to add what's commonly known as the Louis Building behind us. So there was a second approval granted in 2021. We came back at the end of 2021 to, uh, to request an extension for this previous year. And here we are again asking you for one more opportunity to try to, uh, to, try to resolve this issue. Well, <laughs> who's got some questions or suggestions or anything? Yes, Rick. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, and I want to thank the Commission on their previous work on this. I wasn't part of um, this initial approval but I know how important this corner is in downtown. I know how hopeful everyone is for this to actually happen. Um, I appreciate you being very transparent on the hurdles you've had to go through and where your directions will go, um, depending on where those outcomes come. Um, but yeah, I'm still hopeful for this project. Um, I'm gonna be supporting of continuing this, um, but I'm hopeful that you can find a place for that transformer. We are also, thank you. I agree. It, uh, I think that uh, it's still a good project, and I see no reason not to continue to for another year. Uh, so I will be supporting it as well. I agree. It's the same. It's you know, same good project that we spent a lot of time on, and I don't want to hold it up any longer. I'd really like to see it happening as as quickly as possible. So. We're not holding it up, though. No, no but <laughs> not this time. No, no, that's. <laughs> I, I will, if, if I may say, staff has been very uh, great in trying to help us resolve this issue and things like that too. So we appreciate that very much. It's just we haven't been able to fit the square peg in the round hole yet. Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, yes, I ask a question, Mr. Uh, Correct now. Uh, it seemed at some point, sir, that you had some sort of mojo brewing about. Uh, underground transformer locations uh, on another project uh, closer to the railroad tracks. Um, and, and wondering if that if that doesn't yeah. apply to their situation? So it, it probably doesn't. Uh, we had some initial support given the Market Street renovations next to Commercial Alley that 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 building uh, next to the corner building, I don't know the names of the businesses, but 41 and 45 Market Street had come here. Remember the recessed roof deck in the attic and the chimney? I think it was TMS was doing the work. Well, one of those two buildings had been mothballed since the 40s or something, right, above the ground floor. <clears throat> so when they got all their permits to go and do the renovation, they too didn't have enough power to support the renovations after they got all their approvals. They, they went to Eversource or, and they needed a transformer. And I believe that transformer for that particular project had no other place to go but under the sidewalk. And I think they were willing to, at the time, entertain a submersible, it has to be a submersible transformer to go below the sidewalk. So we looked at it for this location in the State Street sidewalk, which is pretty wide and Eversource got cold feet. Uh, they, don't, they don't 
typically use submersibles. They don't have them in stock. They claim there was a two-year wait to get one, and they're very expensive. So I don't know what happened uh, subsequent to that on Market Street. I thought it was conveyed to me there was no other option. I don't know who paid for it or whether it went in, but that did not appear to be a solution. We were hopeful of that for this location. So then I proceeded to work with the owner of the Citizen Bank property and explore the idea of an above-ground transformer, which Eversource has been saying that's all they do, regardless of context. Um, that's a problem in an urban environment to have to deal with suburban transformers. But the owner of Citizen Bank was at least conceptually uh, supportive of pr providing the real estate, not only for a transformer that would support this project, a pad location, but also move a transformer out of the inside of that bank that Eversource wants out of the building, because that's also non-compliant. So there were going to be two transformers near Pleasant Street, probably were those near the bushes with all the, the birds in them, so hopefully behind that, if you walk by, they're full of birds. Um, so I conveyed, we developed a, a layout to get to 266 State and tie into McNabb's project at 93 Pleasant. There will be a third transformer, as we know, on that property near where the little bulkhead was to get into the basement. So all three of them would be tied together, but they would support the whole block on both sides up to State Street if it worked. I conveyed that to the engineer for this project, and I don't know where that landed. Uh, it probably wasn't cheap to run conduit below grade from the bank to this property, given there's a lot of ledge in Pleasant Street. It's high. but. Um, the city certainly supportive of routing it from Citizen Bank up to their property, but the, the deal, as I understood it, was that the owner of this property would have to pay for that system to be installed, not the city and not Citizen Bank owner and not Eversource. So I'm sure you, you looked at the cost implications and maybe that's <coughs> why you're still stalled. Uh, we haven't had a com follow-up conversation. Right. Uh, yeah, I think costs and technical feasibility, which we preliminarily looked at with um, DPW to be able to get up the street. Uh, those are hurdles that we're, we still think we need to cross, but really we haven't, several attempts to reach that property owner have failed. So we haven't even been able, oh, well, able to have a discussion with then, that property owner to see what's so, available and where. So. I, I'm glad it came up tonight because I didn't know that, and I have been in communication with that owner. So why don't you call me tomorrow, and we'll, because my understanding is Public Works is supportive, despite what you've got to snake through to get there, uh, using that corridor. We, we spent at least eight months mapping out how to get from point A to point B with Eversource and Public Works. So I don't think that's a problem. I don't know that the owner is 100 percent on board. The initial conversations were one transformer, uh, not two, uh, so things are a little bit bigger there. but. Let's talk tomorrow. I think we'd have to have more discussion with Eversource, too, because my my recollection of our first conversation with them was they were reluctant to be that far away from the property. Um, but well, that would I, be yeah. surprising yeah. after multiple conversations we've had with both big wigs at Eversource. Yeah. Yeah. Wigs. Um, I would just like to say that uh, the building has been for sale yes. for a year and quite a chunk of change. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'm thinking it's around five million or something like that. Uh, it's going to be a very difficult project and or empty lot to sell with no electric service. So I feel that um, that uh, if you have to pay for conduit underneath State Street, then so be it. The, the other thing I'd like to say, have you um, discussed anything with the church at, at all? Yes, they have. Um, they're not interested. Yeah, they're not interested. We, made, we, made an, we, well, yeah. we made an inquiry as to whether or not they would be interested in an offer, and we heard back that they are not interested in an offer. They're concerned that the property is on the National Register, um, for one thing, yeah. so they're not sure how it, would, how it would work out with the National Register approval, and they just didn't seem interested in... Um, in making it available to us. That was when we originally presented it to you. We thought that was going to be our best option, um, and we made several overtures to them. I understand EverSource had talked to them about it before we even got involved, um, 
and I believe they turned Eversource down also. So, yeah. yeah. We also had discussion with the, um, uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Um, Jenny and uh, Ms. Jenny and Mr. Beebe uh, about whether or not we could land it on their property. We presented them with some design options for what their property would look like, and they said no. Also, there's no room on the fire station. Uh, not on the current fire station lot, and we talked to the developer of the old Kearsage property who was interested at one point in time, but that didn't come to fruition yeah. either. Let's follow up tomorrow if we yeah. can do that. Okay. Um, would anybody in the public um, like to speak about this project? <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to close this public hearing and um, I'm looking for a motion. I move that we um, grant the another one year approval, extension approval. Second. Um, I hope that it, whatever it gets resolved very quickly so that yeah. this can move forward. So I suppose since it's uh, granting extension. Uh, continuance, uh, extension. extension that it doesn't need finding a fact or anything like no, that. No, it's already had it. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Don't. Thank you all for your help and your patience. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Some extension cords. <laughs> Lots of them. Okay. Now we're into public hearings. Old business petition of Brianne Cressy and Cyril Shen, owners for property located at 46 Mark Street, wherein permission is requested to allow the installation of solar panels to the roof of the house as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 116 as lot 52 lies within the mixed research office and historic districts. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Cyril Chen. I'm the owner of the uh, co-owner with my own self and my wife. All right. House. So I think the last time this was presented to the committee, um, you guys had asked for to see some Could rendered drawings. Can you get drawings. closer to the microphone, yeah. please? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, you guys had asked to get some rendered drawings of what it might look like um, with the solar panel. So I've provided those um, to the committee, and they should be at the end of the document. Um, and if you want to scroll all the way down, actually, to the, probably the end of the document is the first photo that's probably most representative of what it'll look like. <clears throat> um, so that actually is, well, actually, if you could scroll down to the bottom, and I'll talk about that photo last, because um, I think the order of things kind of got reversed when I sent it in the email. Um, so yeah, so this is um, approximately what it'll look like. Um, I don't have the best Photoshop skills, but that's as best as I could muster. Um, the solar panels from Tesla, um, they do sit relatively low on the roof. Um, compared to some other solar panels, they sit approximately two inches off the roof, and then there's a bevel that covers the edges so that it sits a little, looks a little more flush uh, with the roof. Um, and um, you know, I think it blends in relatively well. Um, if you want to scroll down actually one more, it'll show you what it looks like up close. Um, so that's what it looks like up close. It's um, sort of beveled, sits about two inches off the roof. Um, aesthetically, it's probably about as good as you can get for a solar panel. Um, I haven't seen any that look better. Um, and if you want to scroll up, I can show you some other angles. So that's the front of the house, um, that first photo you saw uh, from basically at the end of our driveway. Uh, looking up at the house. I think it's two inches from the bevel. Yeah. To the roof. Um, <clears throat> and if you scroll up, I wanted to sort of give sort of the committee just like, some perspective on what it looks like for the public. Um, so, uh, sorry, scrolling down, just on this photo here actually is what Mark Street looks like from Court Street, which is the majority, nobody, as I mentioned last time, really goes down our street because there's four houses down here and they're all privately owned. Um, and the back of this, uh, our property abuts the middle school parking lot dumpster, so nobody goes back there either. Um, and if you can see, like if you want to zoom in all the way down, you could see maybe the, a corner of our roof from Court Street. Um, the public, 
as I mean, I've lived in I lived in Portsmouth for three years prior to or four years prior to moving into this house. I didn't know this house even existed, having walked down Court Street a hundred times, because it's just kind of so tucked away. Um, and if you scroll up the back of the house, this is what it uh, the solar panels will look like from the parking lot of Hotel Portsmouth. Um, um, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Um, this is just another photo of what the bevels look like. And might be the same photo. It's a little further. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that, that house that's right the there. Roof there. Yeah, that's the roof right there. Yep. I didn't Photoshop in the solar panels there because yep. it was just more for illustrative purposes. And then this is what the back of the house looked like from the parking lot at the middle school. Or the, yeah. I guess it's a parking lot dumpster. I don't know what you call that. Are you still putting panels on all sides of that roof? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to. I, I would. Huh. Um, you know, I did the math, um, and it works out. You know, at around eleven or twelve years, it breaks even between the front or the back of the house, um, and then back past that, it you know, it's all all gains um, in terms of you know electricity generation and, and cost. Um, so so it becomes more cost effective at, after about twelve years. Um, it breaks even around eight years for the whole or for the whole house, and six years if you just do the back. Um, so at least in terms of cost, I'm not sure that matters to the committee or not, but that matters to us. Uh, and that's kind of what it looks like. Um, you know, and if you scroll up, if 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 the committee still has issues with with what it'll look like, there is an option to put a skin on it, and that's a company out of Boston that makes these skins that cover the the panels to make it blend in better with the roof. Um, <coughs> you know, and that's something I'm looking into. Um, at least for the front part of the house, if that's an issue for the committee. Um, but overall, I think the you know considering the, the, the how far back the house sits and, and how little of the house actually gets seen by the public, I do don't think it's you know personally obviously I'm biased, but I, I don't think it's um, a pretty heavy lift um, in terms of aesthetics. <clears throat> and if you scroll up one more, it'll show you kind of what the skin looks like on one side of the roof, which is on the left side versus on the other side. And what they do is they, they match the, you know, the skin to whatever the texture of the roof is. Does it affect the efficiency of the panel? Uh, by about a percent, anywhere from one to like four percent is what they quote. Um, so not a huge amount, but it does have a small hit. Um, but it looks, you know, they do a pretty good. I mean, as far as I could tell from their advertising photos, they do seem to do a pretty good job of blending it. Is um, it expensive, the skin? Uh, yeah, I mean they're not cheap. They're like one to two thousand dollars for I think roughly what I all have in the front. Um, and there is some precedent for this um, in uh, Georgetown in, in D.C. in the historic district. There, they had a similar conversation as we're having now, and that was kind of the compromise they had come to for the front part of their house. Um, and and that's how it kind of you know resolved that issue down in Georgetown. So it's not without precedent that you know these things do get installed in historic districts. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to be able to do, do the front without the skin if I could do it because it is expensive and it's an additional expense. Um, but this is just another option to consider if the, the committee has an issue with the existing appearance. Good spot experiment. What's the skin made out of? Oh, that's a good question. I have no okay. idea. <laughs> it's some sort of semi-transparent material that you know. Makes it look one way, but mostly it like, gets sunlight through. That's all I know. <laughs> so it's a black material that goes over the panels. No, they're so they're print. So if you look at actually, maybe scroll down to the actual photo of what it looks like. That's the next one down. So this is like an actual photo of what the skin looks like on a solar panel. So normally solar panels they just look like black things, you know, black glass on your roof. Match the shingle. Yeah, they and must so, take a photo of the shingle. Yeah, so basically they they print. The photo of a shingle essentially on these sort of thin sheets and then cover the shingles with them and it largely masks the appearance and um you know and you know combine that with the fact that the the tesla panels do have that beveled edge that kind of blends in the the, the raised part a little bit better i think it actually looks pretty nice somebody's got to have some questions here other comments? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm certainly in support of, of renewable energy, um, Portsmouth, and 
Uh, the skin's very interesting to me. I'd I'd be curious. I'd be in support of trying the skin on the on the um, the north side. I think staff has recommended this only go on the south facing roof. That's what I. No, I think what we were suggesting in your absence two meetings ago, right, is that it you're, you're the first applicant to show up in most of our memories putting panels on every roof surface. Right, right. So it, it seemed. Maybe you were here. you weren't here. I don't think. Well, I was the one. Well, I was on here. Zoom. Yeah. I was on Zoom. Okay, yeah. sorry. So the idea was we we imagined they would probably be on the south side and right. not, not the north side. But right. I think if if we were looking at the skins, what you're proposing, if it's supported here, is that yeah. the skins be used on the Court Street facing roof surfaces that would be uh, marginally visible, right? Unless you walk down Mark Street. Yeah. The, the, these two here. Yeah. yeah, well, so the one on the left is what it would look like with the skin on, Correct. the one on the right is what it would these look like. These would be the without. two I think yeah. would have most public oh, visibility. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah. Be kind of odd to do one of each, I think, here. Right. <laughs> um, so I'd be supportive of that of that idea. What the commissioners think? I have a comment. Yes. <clears throat> The location is house is lucky because there's really no shadows and you can use all your roofs. Yeah. It's yeah. almost running north south. It's a little bit probably thirty degrees off. Yeah, it's south. slightly yeah. Um and probably the most offensive to me is the, is actually just the one uh, on the street facing or the driveway facing. The one over the garage is I think is even gonna be harder to see as an angle. You can't. And yeah, I wonder you how much you lose by simply removing that one section. This one. Yeah. That section. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. <laughs> yeah. I could talk to them about it. I and mean, it's weird though. Like Tesla does these like very sort of like set installations, and so like either it's like a twelve thousand kilowatt system or a twenty thousand kilowatt system. It's like they, for some reason, I don't know why, they have a hard time with in between systems. So that's why it kind of ended up this way is because that to get to the larger system, it needed that extra roof space. Um, I mean, I would actually argue the most offensive part of this is the power pole, but <laughs> and the power lines. But I mean, that's, anyways, but all joking aside though, like um, that, that's the reason why I ended up on that side. Um, that is facing north though. It's, yeah, it yeah. is facing north, but northeast. It, yeah, it's northeast. It, it gets actually a fair amount of light, especially in the summer. You know, anytime outside of the darkest winter months, it actually gets a f decent amount of light. And the calculations for power generation, you know, Tesla ran through their whatever, you know, software they use based on the angle of the sun every day of the year, and they could figure out exactly how much it generates on average per year. And, and it, does, it, it is efficient enough to have it there. A okay. question. Martin. Uh, yeah, this is one of the better presentation applications I've seen, but unfortunately it's, for me it's too visual for our historic district and I, I know this is a bit of a dead, this is a dead end street, but to me it's still in the district and so I can't support it. Okay, I, I think, you know, the, the solar panels really function more like a utility for me, in my personal opinion. And, you know, in terms of utility, I don't think it's all that offensive when you consider things like mini split, you know, outdoor units and, you know, the power pole that's tilting in front of my house and the lines that have to run across. You know, these are things that are sort of essential and, and the power solar panels, quite frankly, will probably become essential within the next 20, 30 years, 20, you know, 10, 20 years um, for most people. So, I think it does warrant a slightly different evaluation than sort of just any, you know, addition or whatever cosmetic change to a, to a building. Understood. It, it's just that right now it isn't essential. It's a it's an option, and for me, I cannot support it. Okay. Yes, Reagan. I had a couple questions. Sure. Um, have you spoken to your neighbors about this? Is there anybody who's concerned about? Um, not well. So the two neighbors right now are all rentals. So I haven't talked to them about it specifically. But I'm I'm happy open to doing it. Yeah, I'm not. Well, you've got to someone it. across the street who is. Uh, yes. Yeah, I have not spoken with them about okay. it yet. Yeah, um, we have certainly could. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, I mean, I would like to know. Make sure that everyone who 
because it's a dead end street, and as you say, not very many people in the public see it. And I want to make sure that the <laughs> the people sure. who do look at yeah. it all the time yeah. are. I would like to know their opinion. Um, this is a tricky. It's an, this is an interesting property um, for where it, and, and location in the district. Um, like Martin, I take uh, very seriously the this the look of this and the aesthetic of it, especially in our historic district. Um, and you're right, the, it's almost like the front of the house is actually less publicly visible than the rest of the house. I mean, you can, you showed lots of pictures. It's actually, the other sides of the house are actually very visible from parking lots, um, from the middle school and things like that. But um, at the same time, this, the location and the context of this house is not um, so it, it doesn't have high integrity around it so you've got parking lots surrounding this rather than lots of the historic houses that probably were there beforehand um, it's not the south end it's not the very dense um, areas in our district that have a lot of integrity in terms of the, the context, the houses, the surrounding properties and things like that. So I'm leaning to, I, I mean, I think that I can support this because of that. Um, it's, we always talk about setting precedent, but we always make sure to be very clear in that we look at every single property on its own merits and not give blanket approval to anything just because one house gets solar panels doesn't mean that everybody, every other house gets solar panels. Um, and so and the fact that this house maybe has some old structure in it, but it is essentially a new building, <laughs> essentially a new house. Maybe yeah. it's older on the inside, but the exterior. No, looks, I think it's actually foundation everything new yeah, as far it, as I know. It looks like a brand new house, which also makes me more inclined to be more lenient in allowing newer technologies on this building because it does some, it, it can be more of a stark contrast when you have solar panels on a very historic house that um, is very has all its authentic you know uh, materials and everything so rambling on and on this is just my thought process to get to the point where I, I can support this um, this application thank you anyone else here um, Mr. Chairman, yes. Uh, may I say I hope that this has nothing to do with the fact that it's not near my house. Uh, but I, I think that uh, in lieu of knowing what other people in, in, of your neighbors and think of it, it, to me it seems like a reasonable request on this street in this location uh, because of its lessened impact and the, the context. Of, of the application. Uh, I have an issue with, with the, it, the panels being on the northern side. It, it, seems, it seems wrong. Uh, considering the impact, the questionable impact, I like the idea of uh, it being covered with a material that changes its uh, reflectivity <clears throat> so that it does not look like a big shiny plastic field. Uh, I think that's a, for what you suggest, small money and a small impact on the on the units itself to get us over that or get me over that hump of this big reflective surface on the roof. Um, and, and I think that maybe I'm nibbling away, maybe I'm just being hopeful that there'll be an answer to this how to fit PE photovoltaics into our historic district. But I, I, I'd be in support of this one, shy of the panel that's over the garage side of the main house, the rear panels in the garage panel I have no issue I think I, I think we have should have no issue with um, uh, David I'd like to ask you uh, uh, were you considering this uh, cover for the, all of the panels or for just I, one? I was I was thinking of the cover for all of the panels in, in as much as it the impact of the panels architecturally are going to be lessened on the back of the building but the the oddness of a large reflective surface I think is going to be too much for me to reach out and say this is good for our community. I want to cover my butt as well as I can with this thing. Okay. I also just meant to throw in there too that I'm in general, generally am in support of renewable energy, but also solar panels in that they are um, 
reversible, essentially. If it breaks, if it goes out, of, if we find something that's uh, energy that's more efficient and we don't need these anymore, you simply take it off and you patch a couple holes in the roof and there's very little impact in the long run. All right. Margo, you haven't? I think uh, my thought process is probably very similar to Reagan's. Um, the This house does have a very new look and feel to it because of the renovation reconstruction that happened to it. Um, but I'm uh, sensitive to the public includes the people who live next to you. It's not sure. just the general public. Um, and there's a lot of visibility on the other side of the building. The entire middle school, whole parking lots, people playing, mm -hmm. you know, on the ball fields. Um, I think this would be, because it is a, a newish looking building, I think this is a place for us to try um, this skin technology. Um, we need to, just like we try new building materials, this is a new building material, and I think we should give it a try. If there's going to be a place to, to try it, it would be here. So I'm in, I would support this if we put the skin material on all of the surfaces. All the surfaces. <laughs> um, okay. Um, it, it, it could, the price could go up drastically with that's, that. That's um, but, you, yeah. You could uh, also get rid of the panels if the, pa you know, on the north side of the building. And, uh, you know, you say this is 20. I could see it's a little over 20, and so it would go down to 12. So be it. Um, is there anybody in the public that would like to speak about this proposal? No neighbors. Oh, oh Jesus. Hang on. Nobody's waving there. <clears throat> No attendees, no. Okay. Um, so I'm going to close this public hearing, looking for a motion, and uh, with the stipulation that uh, Nick has. Can I just reframe yes. what I think others have said? Yes. And maybe add one point to it that, that you can accept or reject? <laughs> I mean, these are kind of findings from what Reagan and David both said, and others support it. The house is new construction. It's on a dead end. If you don't have the panels on that main roof of the, the roof of the main house, what appears to be the main house, given it was all built at the same time, which are the ones that have the skins in the photograph, there'd only be an oblique angle view of this unless you're standing in front of it. The garage is set back 20 to 25 feet from the, the right of way. It would have the skins on it. Um, and I, th I think it's not unimportant to it, whether you agree or not. It's nicer when the panels are rectilinear than stepping in an angle down, down the, the, the valleys, uh, to, at least to the eye. It's nice it's the same shape as the garage roof to me. Um, but the skins would be either on at least that one or the whole building, and that, that's what uh, David's recommending all the, the panels, and as is John. Um, so it wouldn't be on the street-facing facade of the main house, um, meaning the main body of the house, the taller portion. And it, just for the record, the neighbors, all the neighbors within so many feet here, at least 300, were given notice for the public hearing, so it's important yeah. that they were made aware this meeting was occurring. Okay. Is that it, Nick? Yeah. Okay, motion. <clears throat> I'll move that we accept this proposal um, as presented, I think, um, with Nick's um, explanation here. I, I think the skin on the main part, on the panels on the main part of the house facing the street um, are more important to the total overall look. I think the panels over the garage section, both the front and back of that, um, are at such a low angle and um, are kind of tucked away and not nearly as, as publicly visible, um, or at least visible in the whole of this house as that. So um, I don't know if anybody else can, yeah. can accept just we need a second, one we section need of the skin. But. So you're saying 
Just like he presented, so the skin only on the main part of the, the main roof. What you house. see. Right. But the, uh, the big one on the top roof would stay. Yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, we need some kind of findings. Do we have any other discussion Motioning. or questions? How about a discussion, make sure it's gonna pass. Discussion, well, what I would like to say, um, before the meeting, I happened to bring up that little thing about education. I did not do that on purpose because of this project, but it is one of the things that is in our, um, our uh, zoning uh, number 10, whatever we are. Um, as far as educational goes, the fact that this is visible from the middle school is a good thing. And that's all I'll say. Did I just have a clarification? Are we approving the panels on the, the taller north, portion? The north side of the main house. The taller portion of the yes. house. Yes. yes, that's the motion. Being, being skinned. Yeah. Okay, the skin. Want to clarify? Only. Only those being skinned. Correct? Yeah. As presented by the applicant. Right. Well, and I can amend if I'm not going to get full, if, if, if everybody else has serious problems with that. But um, <clears throat> it's a decent compromise. Let's try this out. Findings? Well, I don't want to have it denied. <laughs> I don't want to have this motion support. denied and then he goes away with nothing. So. I'm, I'm just concerned about the glaring glass on the very, very visible other side of this building. There's a lot of panels will be seen from the public view on that side. The very, very visible side, meaning the side that faces the church parking lot? The parking lot of the middle school where all the kids are. The middle school view, I think, is a picture of it. You don't see much because it's coming right at you. And that's uh, uh, go up, get down one. Right. Oh, no one. Board, I'm sorry. Uh, Which yeah, one? Yeah, it's that photo you just passed. Oh. The one above this year. That's the that's view from, from the middle school, and it's behind the middle school where right. only so buses. Right. So that's the uh, view from the middle school. Which so only, they'll see very little. Panels. Only buses drive through that driveway. And it's, it's a, yeah, it's just a, a narrow driveway, no, or I guess the second or third floor. If that's not highly school. visible. It's okay. if anything, it's the parking lot behind the church or behind the Hotel Portsmouth which, which again is a big parking lot mm. I'll add that uh, we also received the City Council received a letter from the middle school environmental club asking us for more solar panels in the historic <laughs> district and they personally called me out for my own restaurant so I um, I don't think they would mind seeing it but. Mm -hmm. as part of their education right. yeah exactly right. Um, Do you need your motion seconded? No, no he's got a second. Um, I would say this is conservation and enhancement of property values and um, has compatibility of innovative technologies. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Against? Opposed. Against. Two opposed. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Petition of Bruce L. Addison, Revocable Trust of 2021. Sally E. Elshout. Revocable Trust of 2021 owners for property located at 17 Prey Street, wherein permission is requested to allow exterior renovation to an existing structure. Replace windows and a door. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 102 as lot 37, lies within general residence B in the historic district. Hi. Hello. Thank Welcome. you. Hello, everybody. Um, this is actually a um, reapproval request for um, the land use that was um, approved in April of 2021. Um, we actually already installed the doors that those were sure approved. Um, 
So we actually, on the bottom part of that drawing, on the very far left at bottom, that's our garage, and that French door was put in. Um, excuse me one second, though. Um, so I assume you're Sally? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, Sally you didn't Oshad. introduce yourself. Yeah, and that's my husband, Bruce, over there. Okay. So, sorry about so that. No problem. Keep going. <laughs> so, um, if you, so Jennifer Ramsey did these drawings for us over a year ago, um, and we uh, wanted to put in French doors, which we already did, and you've already proved it, which on the bottom left-hand side of this drawing, that's our garage. So we have a French door there. And then on the bottom right-hand side, that's the back view of our house, where you see the door that's put in on the right, that's actually a French door. So I didn't have a drawing from hers that shows the French door and all this together. So what was also approved were the windows on the bottom right-hand side, that section, <coughs> those uh, three sets of windows. And then also, if you look at the left view, that small window. So those were already approved. Um, we didn't do them because of the cost of redoing our kitchen. We didn't have, we just didn't have the funds at the time to do that. So what we did, phase one, I'll call it, is we installed the French doors. So now I'm coming back for the request because the, um, approval expired in April of 2022. Um, didn't do an extension at the time. I wasn't aware of the, of the deadline. <clears throat> so now we are redoing the request to, for the windows in the kitchen only. So what I can tell you what we've done is we've talked to our neighbors. Um, David Ewing, who uh, lives at 24 Salter Street. There's... Um, I don't know if you want to look at the tax map that's in there, but he is directly behind us. Okay. Uh, he has approved, a, I've uploaded today, so he's the yellow house. So yeah, that's, that's where, uh, yes, I think that's the one. 24 Salter Street, right. And then we also have the approvals of um, the house that's, uh, I think it's 419, Marcy, but there he's on the corner of Salter and um, Marcy. They can see a little bit of our backyard. Um, I've also uh, gave you the approval of um, Mark and Nancy, who are our direct neighbors on Prey Street. That's the big Victorian. Um, what we have now, there's a fence that abuts in between all of our properties of, um, of the one uh, on right next to us on Prey Street. And then also with David, and um, so th everything's covered with a very high fence. It's not the picket fence that you see today. So I'm not sure what else you would like me to uh, explain to you. Or I also uploaded specifications of those windows. So that's the back of the kitchen, the windows as they are today. The tree's not there anymore, but. And that's uh, from the from the view of the house that's right next to us on Prey Street. And then you can see David's in the back there. Right. So that, um, if you go up, here, so that's David's view. And that fence that you see, the solid fence that goes around, it, it takes away, um, yeah, so basically that's, and that fence that you see there that's between the back of our house and Salter Street is still there. The tree is not. <clears throat> and I've uploaded um, the approvals somewhere from last, last uh, time and also from this time. Right. The window, I just want to explain to you right now, the window on the that small one on the bump out. So that our, we have the main structure of the house and then that section bump out is our kitchen. Um, that window that you see there that faces Marcy Street is um, the count, it's, it goes below the counter and above the counter. So that one is going to be smaller so that the window will be above the, the kitchen counter. And then the three together and the other one is uh, so it's mainly the three one, the three, they'll all be crank outs that will be near where the sink is going to be. Okay, who wants to start? 
Go ahead. I, I just oh. have a question. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I guess. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Do we have an idea what you're replacing the windows with? Um, I set up Second. the spec for Marvin windows. Um, there's the signature. We're looking at the signature, the Elevate. Um, it's just a difference of really of cost and color on it. I was just going to ask. That's these brilliant. are all. This is all totally in the back of the house. Nothing can be seen from the. Hundred percent in the back of the house. Yeah. Sure. Um, and the biggest person that would see it is David, who's Twenty Four Salter, who's also approved it. Yes, Rich. No, thank you. I think you've contacted all your neighbors. Um, like Commissioner um, Rude said, it's in the back of the house. Um, all your neighbors seem happy with it. And um, thank you for such a complete application. Great. Thank you. David, while I'm over here. Nope. Looks very straightforward. I, I can support this. Thank you. It's still a good project. Okay. Uh, would anybody in the public like to comment on this petition? <coughs> Doesn't look like it. Nope. Okay, I'm going to close this public hearing and looking for a motion. I move that we um, approve this presentation as, or proposal as presented. Seconded. Reagan. Can you yes. stipulate that they use the Marvin Elevate window as yes. presented? Yes. Yes. I, I think I up uploaded the signet. Yeah, I didn't see it in the, in what was uploaded here so yeah. oh, I, I, I only got the specs back I asked the okay. selector to we'll do that but I it. uploaded it this morning so. yep. half screens yep. half screens well they're all casements oh, they are. They're all yeah. no screens, yeah. screens. Right. Yeah. Or full screens know, but it's in the back I'm not worried yeah. about it um, this says um, in conserva has conservation and enhancement of property values and um, has compatibility of design with surrounding properties Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You have your Thank you. Permission. Thanks, guys. Uh, <clears throat> petition. High uh, Street. Okay. Petition of Chatham Portsmouth LLC, care of Chatham Lodging Trust, owners for property located at 100 High Street wherein permission is requested to allow the installation of mechanical equipment on the roof of the existing structure as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on our CESA map 118 as lot 30 and lies within character district 5, downtown overlay and historic districts. And who is here to present this? Hi. Hello. Excuse me. Um, Megan Bosley. I'm here on behalf of Dish Wireless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch your name. Uh, my name is Megan Beausoleil. Megan, thank okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Are you reading the description or am I? No. Yeah. All right. So DISH proposes to place three antennas, six RAUs, three junction boxes, three fiber cables, and three power hybrid cables at the 60-foot rad that also require a 5 um, by 7 lease area for ground equipment. So all this is detailed on the next page on the CDs. Or let's see. I know it's kind of hard to see. If you scroll down maybe one more page, you'll get the layout from the one more. Yep, there you go. So this is what it looks like. There's going to be three antennas. Um, they're going to be mounted on sleds on the roof. Uh, the middle piece is going to be a. It looks like a like a refrigerator size equipment um, for their various equipments to power everything up. Um, and then the power will be going down to the bottom where the electrical room is. And it can be painted to match, so it's not as, you know, as from the outside, it will look nicer. It can match the building decor. Um, that's something, you know, we do very often. Um, and to, you know, make sure it looks good in this area. And, um, the, the sleds, so there's three antennas. Um, each sled will have one antenna and three radio heads. Um, and this is to increase the cell service in the area. Um, and that is it. Um, thank you. I'll, 
Thank you for that presentation. Um, I'll, I'll be in support of this. I know we get very lots of emails in the city council um, referring to cell service in town. So anything that improves that, I'm in support of. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Who's the carrier? Dish wireless. Anyone yes, that? Reagan. Um, Is it Brian? I um, was just wondering if no. you had tried to locate these a little bit closer to the center of the no. roofline so they would be less visible to this public in the street. Sure. Um, especially, I'm thinking of that southern one that yeah, is right up next to the edge of the roof line. So the reason why they set it up like this is so it has 360 coverage. Mm -hmm. And so when they're pointing their antennas, there there's a specific kind of frequency that they're trying to aim for and making sure that there's no like tree lines in the way. And you know, so <coughs> there's a a lot of trees and they don't put it there, they'll tilt it a little bit to make sure that it's really getting the coverage that it needs. So that's where that's why they placed it there yeah. and they chose the other locations. But it the general idea is to make sure they have 360 coverage. Doesn't that site actually not, not follow that rule? And it would be better out here? It looks like it's or, nested in there. Or if uh, it's, you know, if it's looking somewhere, if it's trying to point southwest or something, oh, can, you put it, can you put it behind that other overrun so that it's just in, um, towards the inner, yeah, over here. inner side of the building. This one, right? Look at the arrow. Yeah. Put it you here know. instead of on this face. Or I'm thinking even just on the other side, other of, that, side of that box. That box. That yeah, building. under the parapet there. The um, Yeah, we can, we can certainly change the, the design of the antennas if that's suitable. Well, I think just to be clear, I think what she's suggesting, I'm, I'm toggling back and forth, right? Because mm -hmm. we don't see this building on the elevation. We're only looking at this. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. Moving this antenna from this green enclosure from here to here or back here. Okay. If. Uh, yes. Right? Yes. That's what, right. You're, what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I, we can definitely talk to the engineers and, work, and right? ensure that that's yeah. a good place. Because you'll see this from the hill over here. This might be the optimal, actually, here. That might be the best place. So you're moving it about six feet. Just, yeah. just around the... Side. I mean, yeah, I understand trying to get the right angle. So it's just, yeah, it depends on where they're trying to focus that thing. But that would be a lot better if we could move it back there. Okay. Yeah, we can talk to the engineers and ensure that's... Call, still the right? best area, you know, it can still get the coverage it needs, but I, I don't see a problem with that. Okay. How idea. tall is it? I couldn't find a dimension. How tall is it? Oh, um, they're about six feet. So um, they'll be about 60 feet high. Well, the center line will be about 60 feet high. And the the uh, elevator overrun is just five feet? So it's the only height I could find on this map, on this um, rendition. So 63 the 63 inches. Yes, that's what the building is, mm -hmm. and then there'll be the center line of it is 60, so they'll be about 63 feet. Yep, 10 feet. That thing. So the antenna will be higher than that. It's 53. Yes, the antenna will be higher than the rooftop. Yes, Martin. Uh, you're mounting some equipment on the side of the building. No, they're all on sleds. So they're like these big uh, metal pieces that they they put onto the roof and then the there's a pipe and they they mount it to the pipe so nothing will be penetrating the roof other than they're going to put some power lines through the the roof to get to the bottom of the uh, the basement for the electrical the power hybrids okay i'm, I'm looking at sheet a3 yeah and i'm not even sure which elevation that is because it's an l-shaped building if i'm correct it's this side I think it's not. It's a, right here. I think it's not a very uh, precise elevation. It's not an exact, um, and that's the street. So that's, that's Hanover. So it's a diagram. So basically, it doesn't even show the slope of the street. Um, is that on the exterior of the building? Uh, I'm sorry. What is on the exterior? A3. Look at sheet A3. 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 Okay. Right there. What's the yep. question? What is the black lines going down the front? That's, that's yeah. a, oh, so that's that internal. is, that's internal, exactly. So they're gonna okay, penetrate okay. the top of the roof and then they're gonna go through the ceilings to get to the bottom. So right, you won't great. see that on the outside. Oh. Thank you. Uh -huh. So can I just ask a question again, John? Certainly. I mean, it, it seems to me looking at the sleds and the clearance you've got below the unit on the sled, 
this is going to be by far the most visible intrusive piece to the eye here that this should be pushed towards the middle of the building as much as possible given how tall it is we started here but this is actually not that not that beefy given it this one over here next to the apartments uh, if you go look at a3 I mean, the signature corner of the building, if I'm reading it right, this looks like High Street and this is Hanover. Is that the case? Is this Hanover down here and this is High? Well, it is confusing because we don't have all these windows. They're, they're bricked up here with the slope of the street. Not even the building. Is this the corner of the building? <laughs> this is the south, it says building southeast elevation. So help me out. Yeah, this Where's the corner of High and Hanover? Is it, is it here? Yes. That's what I thought, but it's it, gotta be. is Megan? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm trying to follow along here. Who drew this? Wait, I thought this. What are we? Looking <laughs> not at? me. <laughs> hundred high, not hundred market. Excuse me. Yeah, Hanover and High. Yeah. So that if you go in the hotel, you're going in this corner. Is that That's correct? Yeah. Well, let's make sure because yeah. it doesn't look anything like that. No, it doesn't. Yeah, to look at point. the screen down on the end. Is this? If you you got to compare it to the roof uh, plan. Well, I, I did. Okay, I did. Uh, it is, it's, I think it's that is the. Uh, these are the three pieces yeah, you're looking at. So we've so got the bullnose on the corner. Right. Okay. Right. That's high. It's not a good elevation, area. but this to me still is the most visible piece of equipment, given how high it is, mm -hmm. that it should be pushed back from the corner. Okay. Uh, that that's an opinion of one. I mean, I, I think this I, needs to go here and this needs to go back. Yeah, I agree. If they can push that back from the edge as much as possible, okay, into the that's center of the building. I mean, that that's not. Yeah, the farther from the edge, the less visible. Get it over here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is there a certain distance? Distance exactly yeah, that you would want to see. Yeah, I think in order to not have you come back, we need to specify. I mean, I think you need to get it around the junction of the of these two wires, right? The, yes. Whatever the the cables are here, right back to this corner. Okay. Yeah. I think if you do come back, you give us an actual elevation and you give us a, oh. a view of what it actually will look like, and not this sort of guesswork, artificial, bad, badly produced elevation. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. I, I, I mean, I think that this is pretty simple, and we're asking him to push two units back. So I know that we're all upset because we have a bad elevation here, but I don't think that we really need to. Um, hold Could we it. make a make it a specific uh, request to have the unit in line with the elevator penthouse, That's so that good, they good would at least have a, a a mass to so to speak lean <laughs> against? Uh, okay, so. Let's give it a name, the one at the corner. The one at the, at the primary corner of the building. What, what is that piece Careful of equipment right called? The antenna. Antenna. So the corner antenna. How about that? So the ga So I know it's small print, but that's gamma we're talking about this over one. here. Oh, 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 that one over beta. there. Okay, beta. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So it's, do you call that the beta antenna? Mm -hmm. okay. Is yes. that good? Correct. Yeah. Everybody good on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Calling it the beta? Mm -hmm. So David's suggesting the beta antenna be pushed, pushed back into here, David? Can you look at the screen into this? That's correct. Right here. That's correct. It doesn't seem like it's off the path. And it, like I say, gives it something to, to be linked to. Yeah. So it's okay. not just sitting so, in the middle of a field. So maybe no closer to the facade of the building than this intersecting dark line. Yeah. How about Understood. that? So you could still set it here on the corner if it's going out multiple directions. Okay. Okay, so beta would be no closer than the intersecting what are these lines representing? Just wires, cables? Yeah, yeah those are the cables. cable lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other one is called what? Gamma. Gamma. That, yep. oh, this, is this a gamma? Yeah, yep. that's gamma sector. So the gamma antenna would be located in this location. Got if it. If you can't make that work, you come back for administrative approval because I'm not sure anyone's going to like this any better given what's over here. Okay. Does that make sense for a, other than Martin? <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can make that work. I can resubmit the drawings. That's usually me. Okay. Anybody else? How about the, uh, Nick, could you look at the A antenna? The which? The one we didn't talk about? Yeah. 
This thing? No, nope. uh, no. Go, right. when oh, it up goes here. up the corner. Yeah. Oh, well, do we have, that an, be moved do back we have an elevation for that? Or? Yeah, that should be moved back towards the middle of the building. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why not? Or they, they haven't shown us what that one's going to look like, correct? Is there another elevation showing High Street? I don't think so. Yeah, then I think you no. do that. And the they thing can come about up. High Street is it's <clears throat> a narrow street, and you have houses directly across the street, so it's virtually impossible to look up at that angle, um, as opposed to Hanover Street, where you have the parking garage and you have a pretty wide street, yeah. sidewalks and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm less worried about that one. I'm, I am less worried about that one. Yeah. Looks like it's the easiest one to move. Them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the other I, one you got things, move, you know, because you have to aim it. I, I don't know where the pain is in moving it to the middle. Uh, right. Just move it to the, in alignment with this one. These two, yeah. move it into the middle. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. and also as long as it keeps the functionality, you know, sure. optimal right. as well. We do have the Moffat Lad over here. Mm -hmm. John, if I the can. backyard of Which the Moffat Lad, way down below. Yes. Oh, Bray. I know this sounds like a simple you know push things around and here and there and you know yeah I, i'm not comfortable with the idea that you know the presentation gave us a bad elevation we're talking we're just spitballing here about move it over here move it over. i don't want to see i want to see where it's actually going to be i want to see an actual elevation and around and i'm sure you have the resources for it i mean you're, i can produce new location. drawings by tomorrow if if yeah. If an email would suffice, or if I have to come back here again, you'd have to come back. We we don't have a process can, for. Can we can we just do it as a as an administrative approval? Yeah. Well, it still have to come back in a month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what's the comfort level of everybody? I would like some views of you know the building and if what you can or can't see, as also, as well as a official height. I mean, it, the first view shows it's less than the elevator override, and she's telling me that it's another foot higher than that. So I agree with Martin. These are not good views and good understanding of what we're approving. I just don't want you guys to do something we're not happy with, and then it's a mess. Let's get it done right. And all, all yeah, when there the when there's a new construction on these rooftops, the dish engineer and our engineer goes in, and they they choose the spot nobody else gives us any opinions so that's why it's good to hear what you have to say we can certainly move anything you need to move in order to get this to get approved that's not a problem there's no other carriers on the roof okay. that we have to worry about so um, if it's just redoing the drawings we can simply we can absolutely do that I, I think you would want that too I mean I live two hours away if I have to come back I will but it would be great if I didn't <laughs> Megan you can you can zoom in Oh, I can. Yes. Yeah, you could do that. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So February no. 3rd, but we would need to have this okay. sure. uh, two weeks in advance. Sure. Actual build, uh, drawings that look like the building. <laughs> yeah, both so, elevations. Yeah, the elevation. Uh, I would tell you, though, that uh, just to simplify your life a little bit is there's no need for all of the technical jargons that are in here. We don't care. And it sure. has nothing to do. All we're concerned about is the look. look Understood. Like? Okay. Do you want to see, you know, renderings of, you know, Photoshop, like with the solar panel, panels, or is yes. that is that necessary? It would be good. Okay. It would be helpful yeah. just so that we can understand where it might be visible. Sure. Okay. That'll also help your designer maybe make it less visible. Sure. Okay. Thank you. We will do that. All right. So, should I move to continue this to next month? February 3rd. Second. Yeah, next month. It's been okay. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Why'd you trust it? Petition of Russell and Sprague LLC owner for property located at 46 State Street wherein permission is requested to allow exterior renovations to an existing structure. Install granite sills on brick facade where sloped mortar was used before. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on Arcesa Map 105 as Lot 11 and lies within Character District 4 and the historic districts. And who is here to present this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Ben Auger. I'm the general contractor for this project. Um, 
We were granted permission several months ago to replace the, the brick on both sides of the building, um, but we neglected to address the sills specifically. And the sills of all the windows are just um, sloped mortar, which is deteriorating very quickly. So we're repla we've replaced all the actual brick, and what we'd like to do for the window sills is um, use granite. And I, I took a few pictures, just walked, I don't know, 100 paces, got a, um, pictures of some other granite sills on buildings on State Street. These might all be on State Street. They're all within a very short distance. And then <clears throat> that's uh, an actual picture of the, the granite sills that we've used with, you know, this is obviously after we took the old brick off. The gray parge coat is just a structural reinforcement of the inner withes. And then the, um, the brick that we're using is that one brick there. We actually have a sample of the brick and the granite here, if you'd like to see it. Questions? Uh, that, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, may I, um, that sample that you have that someone is holding up with yes. their hand, um, it, is that what you think of using? Yes, I have a piece right here if you'd like to see it. Um, sure, sure, I'd love to see it. Uh, it, it yeah. So this is the... Oh, boy. I know where you're going, David. You do? <laughs> Am I in trouble already? Yeah, yeah, you've already lost. <laughs> All right, that's great. That's a flame texture. Um, I don't know if this is going to pass all that well. <laughs> the brick, but the brick's already there. Yes. On the, on I'm the good front. on the brick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You said a month ago, a couple of months ago? Did we review any brick on no. the front of this building a no, couple of months a ago? No, it's Pardon? It's exempt to do that. Right? We, that's why we didn't review it. Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. Can I ask you, hey. which one of these surfaces would be the one that would be exposed? Is it this surface here? It will be two surfaces. It will be that that will be sloped and then the, the edge that your finger. The rough face or the smooth? I mean, isn't there a rough and a there, smooth? Yeah, there's but a rough face. It's not going to be like this. He's talking thermal finish. Yeah. 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 You want a thermal finish? Yes. Yeah. It's but not good. Is it going to be like this? Yes. yes. The, don't you think this is rather thin? Didn't I mean, what is this? This isn't even as thick as the, the brick. wooden window sills that we like people to use. Yeah. yeah, it's a brick thick. Yeah. So this so you've already put your bricks in there. Of course you can cut them out. I mean, the, the, oh, these no, are. Put in oh, there. So your examples are a brick and a half to That's two bricks. That's my opinion then. that it's thin. Right. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chairman, may I say, yes, sir. Um, as a purpose of, which we'll is say, for lack of a better word, education, uh, uh, I went back to the records of applications to this building, and, and I was surprised, and I reminded myself, although I had forgotten, it was a dive shop. I remember. Of course you do. It was quite a battle. And the they were in the process of r removing the rustic siding uh, on, on that shape. Uh, they retained the three windows, they were, which were made for wood frame and not very pretty uh, when it came to the brick. And so they had permission, they got sought permission and received it to replace those wood frame windows. And along with that, replaced all the wood frame windows in the building. In the process of doing that, they removed the subsills. I think you're probably uh, familiar with the expression of subsill. They had wooden sills basically built into the masonry. Some people have them on their office buildings. Um, and and uh, they weren't granite. That's why there's no granite sills there. And the reason that there's this sloped cement wash there is whoever did that work now 30 years ago uh, yanked out the wood frame windows and the wooden subsills, threw them away because they were rotten, and made the windows a larger size so that they would fit yeah. that opening yeah. and got by with just some smeared cement, yeah. which didn't work, never did work, wasn't ever going to work, but the check cleared. 
Yeah. Um, anyway, so now the applicant is uh, wanting to try to retrofit fit a traditional uh, look to the window by having a stone sill in place, which certainly is a better deal than wooden ones. Uh, but as you no doubt uh, were referring to, putting a piece of stone in at an angle like it's a piece of wooden windowsill is not how it's ever been traditionally done. The stone sills are have vertical sides, horizontal bottoms, and their top surfaces were carved hewn yeah. to give them the pitch that's required. So even in the example, the left-hand example of uh, the applicant's uh, pictures, it shows uh, a traditional sill. Now, one of the other things that happens with these traditional forms of sills is they were laid up as the building was being laid up. In other words, the masons didn't cut a course of brick in half. They laid a course of brick and then set their stone sills on it and then ranged upward from there to make their window openings. So the retrofit's going to be a little bit dicey and it's going to take some will from the uh, applicant to have it look as good as the one in the left-hand photograph. Uh, which is what I would support if they wanted to do this. Uh, David, I, you know, I didn't want to interrupt you, but besides, you know, the putting it on an angle, which doesn't bother me as much as it, it bothers you as far mm. as the construction method, it's the actual thickness of the material. If you were to look at the left-hand side, an, an older granite, it is the thickness of two bricks. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the right-hand side, albeit it is a new sill, mm. um, it is, I would estimate, one and a half bricks thick. Mm. So it's three and a half inches or so. But the, the, the granite sill that he presented is an inch and a half thick. I mean, mm. you know, I was holding it like this. That, that's my whole problem. But anybody else have any comments here? <clears throat> Questions? Yeah, I, I share the same concern that it is, it is kind of thin for profile, and it is kind of awkward in that it's squared and you're going to angle it. Um, I got to think it. You could probably find a, a more appropriate sill with a two brick height and the, the uh, proper angle. Would you agree? Um, w w uh, we can certainly get thicker stone. It's it's a uh, it's just a, a time thing. Um, uh, what um, could you clarify uh, what you mean about the angle? Would, do you want the sill to be flat? No, I don't. I don't think you want it flat. Um, nope. I don't think we want it flat. Right. I, I I could deal with it. I could deal with it being slightly sloped and the face being slightly sloped. Mm -hmm. If we could get, if we could get the thickness of a two brick uh, unit. Okay. Two brick. So that's going to be four inches thick. Um, I don't. I don't think either one of those are that thick. Um, well, but de definitely the left-hand one is. This looks like it is. I think yeah. it'll be more than two. It'll be like a brick being two and two thirds, or two and an eighth, or two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. It'll be you know a little more. Okay, a little more. Okay, so okay. So the um, the thickness. It's just more more than what we have, not necessarily four inches. Or yeah, I is think there... the first thing everyone saw was how thin that was. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Go go measure the one that you're taking a photograph of. I think that that's your best direction to go. It pro will provide the of course the cleanest of the installations. Right. Right, so these two photographs, it, so one thing I noticed about the granite sills along State Street is yeah. every single one was different on each <clears> building. <throat> but this is, as you point out, I mean, that's the, that's the oldest right there. Yeah. Uh, the other photo I included, um, it is thinner and it is sloped and it's new. Yeah, mm. it's more like three inches thick. It's also, it, it's more textured than most of our Yes, that's a very materials. rough finish. More textured even than your flame yes. sample. Yes. Yep. That would be good. I have a quick question. Yeah. Okay. Um, does it does it really need to be sloped very much? Because I just don't know what the wind the current windows have. If if they already have a sill, a, a sort of an, an angled sill. Like, no, like, like David was saying, the, the, you know, it was this was the, the that original 
thick wooden sill was removed decades ago. Um, and so, you know, there's, uh, we don't have to slope it very much just so that there's a, you know, the water's not going backwards. I think so. So. Right. Um, yeah, I just couldn't tell from here whether or not there was enough of a sill already in the window to help condition. keep it away. But it's, if, if it's pretty shallow, then I, I understand is, wanting uh, to have a little bit of an angle on the, on the stone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, John. Oh, yes. Um, I. I'm in support of something a little bit thicker, but I'm also looking very closely at the one photograph that you showed us and measuring against the courses of brick that we can see. Um, I'm wondering if, to a certain extent, you're going to be constrained with the space that you've got when you take that first course out and where the window lands. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think we should be asking you to <laughs> change out the, the windows in order to get the, the thicker sill equal to the one that's down the road. Right. Um, but I, I do think that we need to fit the space that's there. Um, and unfortunately, that might mean you're going to have a bunch of different sill heights. Um, I think we, we, can, we can make all the sills the same thickness. And, I'm, and we will, I mean, mine will make it thicker than what I just showed you. Um, unless I'm missing something. I mean, I, I could like get back to you in the morning, Nick, yep. and you know, after make I take it, a look. Make it fit the project. That's fine. Fit the project. Fit the project. I mean, you've got pretty defined spaces here. And just yes. Use, use all the space. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other? Or I'll ask the, would any, anybody in the public like to speak on this project? <clears throat> Close this public hearing. And I'm looking for a motion. Well, I have a question. Do we want? A, I guess it depends on who makes the motion. If we're going to define a thickness or have an administrative approval, I can come back and give us a mock-up or a presentation of certain thickness of stone. I think, given the applicant doesn't really want to come back in three weeks, but nod your head the other way if that's not true. You probably want to go at something between a brick and a half and two bricks, but they all have to be the same. Yeah. Fine. And let them go look at the building and yeah. And you'll put a, a slight minimal angle on that flat sill, right? Less is more. No. No. Dave. No. I'm, I'm good. It, it 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 doesn't obviously have to be historic material because it's not a historic material. Those days are gone. It just it when somebody's actually trying to utilize a historic form to present something, it seems like an august body like ourselves should be able to try to encourage them to get it right. That's all. Yeah. Will that stipulation not do? I that? think that'll be fine. Good. Is that good for the applicant? Okay. Right. Fine. I I move that we. Um, approve the application with that stipulation. I can second that. Um, this pre preserves the integrity of the district and um, has compatibility of design with surrounding properties. Good. All righty then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You Thank go. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. uh, <clears throat> All right, now we've got a petition of Novacure Incorporated owner for property located at 64 Vaughn Street, wherein permission is requested to allow exterior changes to a previously approved design as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on our SESA map 126 as lot one and lies within character district five downtown overlay and the historic district. Please introduce yourself. Uh, uh, good evening. I'm Mark Muller from JSA Design. Welcome. Uh, repre representing the applicant, uh, Novacure. Uh, with me tonight uh, for support, if, if required, uh, Dean Smith from Novacure and uh, Shane Forsley from Hampshire Development, uh, the previous owner, but also now the uh, contractor. Um, so you may recall when this project was approved in uh, late 2021, we indicated that a change in ownership and occup occupancy was pending. So in January of 20, 
22, NovaCure did acquire uh, the project, and we've proceeded to incorporate their business occupancy into this previously approved shell. You'll, you'll recall we had, at that time, residential uh, on the upper floors with a to-be-determined commercial use at the, at the ground floor. So before we had it approved, uh, in anticipation of that change of use uh, from residential to business, we removed all of the exterior balconies that dotted the facade. Um, there were quite a few of them, both on the Vaughn Mall side as well as on the uh, Worth lot side. So those were all removed. Make sure that it's accessible to all of their employees. Uh, they would like to extend the elevator up to serve that roof level. Whereas before we didn't have, we had an, an overrun, but we didn't have the actual elevator serving that level. So that is the crux of the basic change to this elevator overrun, and I'll go through some of the shapes and sizes here momentarily. And also um, the uh, size of the roof terrace, because this is now a business occupancy and there's uh, likely to be the potential for more people utilizing that roof deck than when it was just a, a residential project. Uh, the size of the uh, roof deck has increased, and we've also uh, introduced as a second means of egress off of that roof. Um, and all of these components, the elevator overrun and the second means of egress, and the roof deck surface itself, all of those um, uh, we believe fall under the uh, definition of a roof appurtenance. We've got, uh, we've uh, calculated the square footage of all of these components, including uh, mechanical equipment that is on the roof, and all of those combined still fall uh, with un uh, under the allowable percentage uh, for roof appurtenances, and the, you know, the proper setbacks and heights uh, have all been met. So there's quite a few drawings in this package. Not all of them reflect changes. Uh, some are here just for reference. Um, so the best place to start, uh, Nick, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you could scroll to the third page, which is sheet A2.A. A. This is the previously approved uh, plan, so back from <laughs> November of, of 2021. And you can see that at that time we were uh, uh, contemplating a, a fairly sizable skylight right in the middle of that roof, surrounded by a very small roof uh, deck. Um, and that was part of the approval uh, package uh, at that time. So if you scroll down to the very next sheet, you see what is being proposed. Um, the the area that is <clears throat> got the horizontal lines on the right, that is the extent of uh, the roof deck itself. Just to the right of it, that vertical bar, that is uh, a termination of a stair that would um, that does have a sloped surface to it, which you'll see in an elevation uh, momentarily. And then the larger uh, elevator overrun component there, there's a, a stair uh, and the elevator overrun and a small elevator lobby that provides access out onto that terrace. Um, what's unique about bringing the elevator up this high to serve that roof is that, as you're all probably aware, an elevator overrun is by the time you have the hoist beam, the clearance, the thickness of the roof and insulation that are above the shaft itself, it's roughly 14 <clears throat> feet from the floor you're serving to the very top of the roof. So that's what <clears throat> is represented at the, at the very peak of this, um, this element. And, and scroll to the next sheet, so I think you see it in elevation there. So this drawing uh, above, the drawing above was the previously approved elevation where we just had the, the yes, the skylight and the, the basically it was a stair um, component. And then down below is the proposal where we're, what we're doing is introducing the same architectural roof scape uh, that the addition on the left has. So in other words, it's a flat topped <coughs> mansard expression. Uh, we've, we've introduced some shed 
gables on the sides uh, to add some additional interest. Um, and when we've, when we've created this uh, hip-topped mansard expression, the height of that element itself, uh, following the, the zoning definitions, <coughs> uh, we're calculating to the midpoint uh, between the, the, the soffit at the bottom of the 30 and 12 pitch to the peak. And <clears throat> that midpoint represents the height of that roof appurtenance. And it is um, below 10 feet above the allowable height. So you, you can see there's a red line on the bottom drawing that uh, right there, exactly. And it's roughly 9 feet 3 inches to that midpoint. Which, which is also the, uh, roughly the height of that second means of egress as well. So, those, so both of those elements fall within that 10-foot uh, 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 vertical definition of, of the roof appurtenance. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's continue. So this is sheet, so sheet uh, 3.1, that is, uh, the previously submitted uh, Vaughn Mall side uh, and, and the proposal uh, down below. Again, that second means of egress that you see uh, with a slope top is set back 16 feet from the facade. Uh, so it, and, and it's roughly, you know, nine foot three above the, uh, the height. Um, and you'll see later in the, in the package there are perspective views, much like you were requesting from earlier applicants. But we provided these views from various uh, stations around the site uh, to show you the visual impact of, of some of these elements. Um, it's, it's a, a4. A4 is the um, previously approved and proposed north elevations. Um, there are a few minor um, revisions that I'd like to just point out while we're here. They, they show up in a larger elevation later. But in addition to the uh, elevator overrun, um, there are a couple of minor uh, changes. Um, and it's easy just to look at the garage door. If you all remember, we have this, this small driveway alley uh, right in the center, exactly. And it's set back fairly, f uh, fairly deeply from Hanover Street. Um, in the previous application, you can see directly above it, uh, the windows that stacked above that were uh, one group of, of uh, triple uh, mulled uh, windows. And we, <clears throat> because of the interior layouts, um, that became a, a, a prime location for uh, uh, public restrooms, which have a, a, a demising wall right in the center. So we've broken apart that triple, made it uh, uh, two windows with a space in between to accommodate the, the needs of the interior. And then you'll also see that there's a couple of small mechanical louvers right above the garage door. Those would be, those would be painted uh, in the same color as the field of the clabbers that they'll be setting in. They appear a little stronger in this because it's just, just the number of lines in, in the drawing software. Uh, so A, next sheet, A5. Well, A5.1 through 5.8 are all of the uh, enlargements. Um, whoops, sorry, I missed this one drawing. So this was uh, 4.2. Go ahead. 4.1. 4.1, I think we did. Uh, 4.1. The, you can see the previously approved above and proposed below. So that is the um, the side facing the alley and, and 25 Maplewood. So it just it does uh, poke its head up above the rooftop. Um, that we have introduced some uh, windows on that side as well to break up the the uh, uh, the size <coughs> size of that facade, and it also would bring some daylight into the elevator uh, lobby below. Uh, 4.2, there's one, um, one element I do want to point on here, exactly right where the cursor's pointing. Um, again, part of the reconfiguring this building for a, co a commercial office <coughs> use versus the residential, we did introduce a new egress stair 
uh, within the building, and, and this particular stair needs to uh, egress directly out. So we've, we've placed that door that terminates directly out um, where you see in, on the right-hand side. And we, because it's a single door, we've chosen to um, align it so it falls directly below the single windows that you see on that facade. Um, so it just lines up exactly with, with those. Um, and then the next uh, four or five drawings are the enlarged views. Now, generally, these all show any revisions that we've just been discussing would be visible in these. So in this, in this first drawing, you don't see any of these changes um, that we've just discussed. So you can just scroll through, Nick, and I'll, just, I'll stop you. So here you see the introduction of that egress terminus and the, um, you just get a glimpse of the, that louver that is at, uh, above the garage door in that location. Um, these for are, are, are a little bit uh, further away. Um, when you're looking over La Coretta, you do see just the top of, uh, of that overbuild. You'd have to look quite closely in that uh, in order to see it. But I want to share that with you as well. At the Von Mall side, um, you don't see any of these these changes. As, as I mentioned before, even that second means of egress, it's 16 feet away from the Von Mall facade, so um, you're not going to see it uh, from eye level. Um, and this is the one from, uh, from uh, the Worth lot that does show just the, the top of uh, this overbuild that you see there with one gable. Um, they're, they're mostly shed dormers that we have placed on the perimeter, but in this particular facade facing the, uh, the Worth lot, uh, we've introduced one gable dormer, very similar to the one that is on the left side of, of the addition. Um, Again, another view from, from the Worth lot side. You can, um, uh, none of the uh, adjustments that I've just described are, are, are really visible here. You do just get a glimpse um, at, at where the two, two additions come together. And so, and these, <clears throat> this last, this next drawing here probably should have been ordered slightly differently, but we've, I just placed all of those views all together on one sheet with a key plan uh, for your reference if you needed to see exactly where these views were, uh, were taken from. Um, partial elevations, again, these are mostly for reference. Um, we haven't changed anything on these elevations. I'm just showing you some of the uh, what you see on the rooftop uh, beyond uh, in this proposal. The roof deck itself, um, because it's set, it is set back uh, from the facade. Um, we are, you know, keeping people uh, away from the, you know, the parapet of of, of uh, the original building. And we'd like to also introduce a, um, a, a very simple and as, um, um, as invisible of a guardrail as we can just to keep people contained within the roof deck itself so they're not wandering about. Um, and we're proposing a cable, uh, a cable railing system uh, around the perimeter of, of this deck. Um, scroll through, and I'll point out no real changes to that one other than what you saw beyond in, in the rooftop. And this is a, just an enlargement of the drawing I mentioned before uh, of, of the garage door with the mechanical louvers that are uh, uh, are shown. And again, just to just remember in plan how far back from Hanover Street that particular facade is. It's it's uh, there's a, a 20 foot wide easement uh, through there. Again, the details were there for reference, and we've introduced these uh, similar color. Uh, uh, rendered versions of the drawings that you uh, saw in line form before. <clears throat> so
So there, for instance, you, you can just get a glimpse of the that gabled dormer that is on that overlap. <coughs> yeah, exactly. So while while the elevations it has more of a prominence, but when you when you look at it from the way that the building will be perceived um, uh, uh, by pedestrians, uh, this is this is more uh, representative of what it's going to look like. Again, no no visible changes on this facade. Okay. Excuse me. Sorry. <clears throat> And, oh, no, you go ahead. Yep, and we've also introduced a couple of uh, bird's eye. Wait. Yeah, I have a quick question. Is there a question? Sure. Yes, if we can go Let's back see. to 13B. Yep. <laughs> Could be the same question. Yeah, so I don't understand. I don't know if this is just um, a rendering issue, but the piece that you've got pointed at out there, that mm -hmm. little thing that's visible, um, is that going to be collaborated because it, that would not then match the the roof that you're trying to replicate. Yes. Well, there's a couple of different. Um, there's. It might be easier to explain it on the next couple of drawings, and we can have that that dialogue, um, okay. and and it may answer your question, um, and and probably this bottom. Uh, these two together, we can try to illustrate what. Um, what we've done. So in most of the um, main building that's on the left hand side, all of those dormers that are there, they emerge out of that sloping um, plane, which is this artificial slate. Um, in the elevator overrun, there are a couple of instances because of um, desired head clearances and issues like that from internal issues where there are some facades that are that don't emerge from the sloping plane they emerge from the base so in other words it emerges from the outer footprint when it does that I've chose chosen to keep the clabbards which are there um, intact and um, I, you, I see mean? that line of reasoning, but I don't agree with yeah. it. What was in town <laughs> right here? This vertical I would think plane, that you want to keep that dark and yeah. roof line colored that, so that, that, that it doesn't show up. It's the, not yeah, less the visible. Gab the, the gable and in particular right there, I, I, I definitely see your point that th that would have the same kind of shingled yeah. Um, yeah. This one. pediment, if you will. Yeah, below the window. I don't care, matter, but it, yeah. I, I would yep. think that you wouldn't want something bright up there that would catch your attention. Understood. Yeah. Can I ask something else while we're on yep. this image? Sure. You've got a lot of space above those windows and that door, and that's obviously the main uh, port of entry to the roof deck. Mm -hmm. Does it make any sense to run this roof out a little further and maybe bracket underneath it to provide cover for the door and break up this blank mass? Mm. Um. It, it it certainly would be doable to extend it out. I don't know that I, I want to extend any of the footprint out any further, oh, but just but, the roof. You know, the shed roof, perhaps with a bracket or two to right. You know, uh, eighteen inches or something. Yeah, it, it could it, it could easily be done that way. Does that make any sense to others? Oh, it's a very practical, it's functional idea. too, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. functional, practical idea. Very good. <laughs> And the, um, I think the next, the next, there's a couple of just obligatory sections here to sort of show that point you were just uh, looking at, uh, Nick, where the, the, the door which leads to the elevator uh, and, and uh, the egress stair. So there's one door out to the roof terrace that brings you into a small lobby. You go into the elevator or down the, the egress stair. And, and that illustrates the other the, the point there where there are clabbards below, um, and then the same shingled uh, uh, overbuilt, if you will. As, could I ask a question yep. as a matter of curiosity? Um, you've created quite a large structure around the elevator shaft mm -hmm. and overrun 1,200 square feet. 
Um, was this done for um, the mathematical machinations necessary to meet the code? Is it done for um, possible programming that might happen upstairs? A, a, little, a, a little bit of both. Um, so in order to in order to have the the flat top, which was really above the elevator shaft itself, that really drives the geometry of where I can start sloping. Um, so, uh, for instance. Um, Nick, if you would scroll to a bird's eye, maybe I can describe it better if you're looking at the bird's eye. <clears throat> um, so the, the element that you see on top of the overbuild that looks almost looks like it has an X through it, that's the footprint of the shaft itself. Mm -hmm. So there are, all of those corners are prescribed for me. That's where I can start sloping. Um, and, and the the way the uh, required run of the stair that's adjacent to it, where it terminates next to the roof deck itself, that prescribes the outer face uh, of where those doors are. So now I have two two points to work with, and I'm trying to connect those two. One starting with a three and twelve finishing with a 30 and 12. So you're saying your rise and your run of your roof dictated the on, size on, of On your one walls. side, and then I'm trying to just match it on the left. So it. it's, it's, it's required on one side. It's more um, subjective on the other side, if you will. But it creates a symmetrical um, overbuild, if you will. And, and the, the, there's, there are some small... I'd call them like clear story windows that are facing the 25 Maplewood building. Those will illuminate the, um, el the elevator lobby on the other side. Again, this elevator, because we've got three stories on one side of the elevator and four on the other, um, we have elevator lobbies on both sides serving this, this building. So those clear story windows are illuminating a, a, a lobby on the other side. Thank you. Very good. Cool. Just, just to add to that, Marco, mm -hmm. I think to answer your question as well, the mansard roof design with the hip top mansard was the only viable, it, the guess. only viable solution to provide the yeah. headroom needed to support this. So, I got they're that. just lucky. Yeah. There's a mansard below it. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Again, yeah. We were, and I think if Frenchy the last, um, if this isn't the last page, the last no. page in this. Um, uh, keep keep going. It's a color drawing, so once you get to it, you'll know it. Um, it's a um, well. This is the other side. Those were the clear story windows I just mentioned, um, the ones that the, the small uh, cluster uh, right there, exactly. And the the last, you know, this drawing illustrates the sort of the mathematics of the areas that we had talked about. So everything, um, as I understand it, everything that stands up above the roof, so mechanical equipment stairs, the deck itself, the handrail, the elevator overrun, all of that um, uh, cannot exceed 33% of the total footprint of the building. So, we, so we've gone through the, the calculation there um, and all of those components that we have at the moment, uh, it comes to 29%. So including all of that pink area, which is pretty sizable, but it is the roof deck. So there's still a few percentage points in case there are other mechanical surprises as we're you know, building this building, uh, any needs that, that, that still are yet to uh, come up, uh, we do have uh, the ability to accommodate um, that at, 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 at the moment that what we think we, we, uh, uh, we know what we need. I'd just like to ask you about the green grid roof. Yeah, the, the, the notion that we would like to uh, um, introduce, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with it, but even um, it, it basically is a, is, is a plastic tray that can come in various thicknesses, but what, uh, what we would love to be able to do is, is use the the thinnest of the ones that are available. It's roughly 
two and a half inches deep. And it comes with a pre-planted medium that you would buy from a company. And these are, these are almost like a, if you went to a nursery and you bought a pallet of Ajuga or Vinca or something like that. It's, it's almost like that. And you could set these grids up and, and we, you know, we would love to run as much of that around the perimeter of the rock, and it can sit, sit right on top of the rubber roof. So instead of someone sitting on the terrace and just looking out over an expanse of uh, 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 membrane roofing, you could put these green grids uh, there. They won't be visible to anyone but the, the people on the deck itself or abutters that are, have an aerial view of this. Um, uh, but uh, you know we could uh, align them um, wherever uh, we have uh, the ability to do that. They do hold a little bit of water, so they actually do sort of slow down the, um, the amount of runoff that you have. Um, but the thinner uh, device that we would be using, uh, again, it's a weight issue. So um, we are we are making some structural renovations to the roof. Uh, to be able to accommodate the, the added load of, uh, of an assembly use for um, a terrace. Um, but we'd like to not do that to the whole roof. We just want to limit where it, where it occurs and keep it right in the center. I have just one other question. Um, you have your mechanical equipment there, which has been moved, or it's definitely different. Um, I don't see any provisions for a rail isn't there supposed to be a safety rail up there? And um, what's that going to look like? Uh, we we have not suggested a safety rail. There is a there is a uh, a, uh, a, a small uh, parapet on that side, but it's generally on the left side of this plan, uh, where you see that horizontal uh, piece of equipment, which would be the generator. So there is a bit of a parapet on that side, but not along the there. Yeah, you're probably going to need a railing then. I, I think that um, it's some kind of code thing that you undoubtedly will have to come back. Yeah, well, if, if that if the building department brings that to our attention, we'll certainly look at it. Right now, the, the intent is to have um, these heat pumps in that configuration, the, those vertical um, um, melon-colored rectangles represent the, the heat pumps that, would, uh, that are, have been sized to take care of the uh, anticipated loads. Good. Mark, what color is the, the rubber roof going to be? This is all rubber out here, right? Yeah, it's, um, most of it is already in place. <clears throat> it's a. Uh, okay, it's black. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while uh, since I've been on it, but. Um, um, any other comments, questions before I open it up? I have a, a left field thing, if you don't mind. Um, on your drawing or rendering uh, A12, uh, you show uh, the six windows on the Vaughn parking lot. I think that's what it's called. Um, the side of the building, the old original building. Mm -hmm. And it being very much like the first floor windows on the Vaughn Street side. Um, and while the sashes themselves and the glass and frames are similar, the uh, street side, the, the old street side, is, seems to have wooden framing. To, it looks like it's getting ready to receive some sort of metal cladding treatment. But on the, on the parking lot side, uh, the, that's brick. It's brick below the windows and brick above the windows, and just wondering how you reconcile that. Yeah, there's there was there were some conditions that were discovered while they were building that um, last. It was almost last winter uh, when the building was all tarped, and the 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 condition that you see on on the rendering is still the condition we intend to deliver. It's just going to be delivered a slightly different manner than we had originally intended but but the uh, the the trim that you see above these windows the metal the, the black uh, metal on both the, the Vaughn Mall side as well as the Worth Lot side that's the look that we're going to achieve when we're completed so they will you're suggesting that they will at some point match yes because that to me was part of the 
pitch for those introducing those other windows. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mark. Um, <clears throat> I think some of the uh, changes in the windows and things are are unfortunate, but I think it's the reality has set in. Set in. You you have to make this a constructible, usable building. So I can accept that. Um, as for the roof deck, I I very much like what I'm seeing in terms of how it relates to what was previously approved, uh, the massing. I, you know, we, we have a lot of despair about the flat roofs in this city, and this is a great way to uh, counterbalance that. So I'm, I think that this is just a very much a plus um, and a wonderful space and a wonderful use of a, of a non-space being a flat you know, membrane roof. I uh, also like the idea of the green. Um, you know, it's got some sustainable uh, features to it. Um, you know, so I very much support this, and and I might um, like the sloped the sloped uh, stairway exit off the Vaughn Mall area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I would just square that off and and do what Nick said and make that more of a formal more architecturally appealing space. Um, but all in all, I, I think it's a terrific uh, addition. And, uh, you know, I wish more of our buildings utilized the roof like that. So I have you have my support. Thank you. Right, thank you. And we'll look into the, the uh, adjustments to the <coughs> gable. to the skin and the, the uh, gabled uh, yeah. dormers and make, make those adjustments. What, what's happening in here? Well, what's um, it's that's just reflective of this this roof on the old building is is not as simple as as one would like it to be. It's not just one flat roof. There's a whole variety of different uh, pitches that were done uh, over the years. So um, the area that uh, where that uh, roof deck uh, occupies is really spanning um, all three. There's there's almost a, a, a ridge down the center spine of this building, uh, or a parapet that has a, a disparity of height, um, foot and a half or so approximately, that happens under that. And I, and I believe those areas that you're seeing are, are uh, and, indicative of a different. So is the, is the roof pitch. deck a foot and a half? above the what's no we're no part of what's happening or is being proposed to to occur is that <clears throat> there's a fair amount of restructuring that's going to occur um, in order to support um, that additional load when, when you put something like there you have to anticipate that on occasion you will have an assembly use and, and it will have more bodies on it and it, the roof was never intended to carry that kind of load, so we are restructuring that portion, um, and that's that's uh, <clears throat> that's a fair amount of a driver of where the limits of this roof deck occur. They happen to align with a column grid that exists in the in the original building, or aligns with the new staircases that are being built inside, all all out of um, a concrete block. And that concrete block provides a, an armature to support that line, for instance, where the the handrail is shown. So it's it's it, it's not a, 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 an arbitrary um, decision to size it that way. It's it's sized that way because it it those loads can go straight down. All right. Thank you for that explanation. Anybody else before I open it up? I have a question. Yes, I, I, I too agree that that's an impressive deck and it looks like a great clubhouse on top. My only concern is the second egress stairwell. That's our historic part of the building on Vaughan Alley and rising nine and a half feet. I wonder if, it, if, if it's going to be too visible. Uh, one of your pictures, I think it's uh, the side view. Uh, from the Vaughan Mall, 
the one that was just in elevation or the perspective? Yeah. Give me a number. A12 I mean, A15 shows it. <clears throat> shows a view from the Vine Mall, and you can see the clubhouse, but you, it doesn't show well that stairwell that I'm worried about, since it's almost, you know, the same height. Um, I wonder if it, if <clears throat> moving closer to the uh, heat pumps, which you know is pretty much invisible from both sides. You got two buildings on either side of it. Mm -hmm. Would uh, really hide it better than the chance of it being seen from the most historic front of the building that that, that well, we the, worked hard to I, see. I, I can tell you that the the location of that stair in plan is is pretty fixed. Um, in plan, it's not. It's not going to to move much, mm -hmm. uh, if at all. Uh, as Martin suggested, perhaps um, uh, perhaps squaring the whole thing off and having um, having a square uh, rectangular feature there that is that seems um, more intrusive to me. But um, I, what about the idea of some sort of trellis on that uh, street facing face of that stairwell? To soften it. Could you, um, you just remind us of the uh, dimensions? For it's nine feet tall and at, it's sixteen at, feet back from the sixteen edge. feet yes. from the from the facade. It would be nice if we had an angle from the street going over the facade mm -hmm. and sixteen feet. Yeah. That well, yeah. Bond Street's quite a, narrow. A five point five. You're not going to see it from Bond Street. Street. Yeah, back far enough. You're not going to see it from Bond Street. <laughs> Maybe may from a Hanover. <clears throat> But you're going to be, okay. you know, uh, quite a distance away. A five point five. Can you go five, that one? Five point. Which is it? Five point five. A five point five. Point. A five point five. Doesn't show it. This there. is the work yeah. lot. Yeah. Now. Yeah, five point four is. Uh, Why doesn't the stairwell show there? That's what worries me a little bit. Well, because it's not—it's it's it's almost not, as tall as the as yeah. The no, it's not. Right? no, it's it's um, it's, it's about not. four or five feet shorter than this. Exactly. That's, that's why yeah. it's not shown. Right. So remember the the um, it, it's roughly nine feet three, but it's nine feet three at that furthest portion of it where you know it, it does the slope. Mm -hmm. So so that puts that high part further away from this vantage point. And this yeah. is also about fourteen. To the ridge, uh, exactly, and that nine and that ten foot elevation. Um, remember, it, that's the midpoint of this overbuild. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. So, there. so you um, you're not you're not being deceived there. That you, you wouldn't be seeing it in that in that view. Okay. In other words, so. this is it. The only time you might see it is there. Exactly, yeah. That's why these obscure views are or or were were selected just because there is that chance from this particular vantage point you do see a little bit more of it. Can you lower it at all? Th that stairway? Um, Even six the, inches? The, um, the nine foot three is, it's, you know, m maybe inches. Um, I'm not going to be able to, um, uh, to make it much more than that with, again, with uh, a little bit of slope on the top and Roof structure and insulation and doors and that sort of thing. I'm, uh, I'm restrained from making um, making promises. I can lower it much more than than just inches. And you said it's 16 feet from the edge on Vol. Yeah, from the front, from, from the Von Mall face. And how yeah. many feet is the clubhouse from the edge on uh, the Von Lot? <laughs> um, if you go. Maybe go to the, that la very last page, Nick, because that, that color, although the, um, I don't know that I have a measuring scale on that particular drawing, but um, but you can. It's at least the same. Oh, God. Yeah, Actually, but you a little can, bit more, but because it's taller, you're still seeing it. One more. There we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's 16 there, and yeah. that's 25. Yeah, easily. And, and you can see by the, the, the way the geometry of the old building, it, it flares out. So um, I, I know that when we were looking at this, the um, yeah, I think Nick is, is probably uh, close to uh, being correct on that. It's at least 25 feet. So it's 25 feet, and the building is almost 11 foot at the top. No, 14. It, this is at least four nine but, nine but you're feet. definitely seeing a good chunk of it yeah, yeah. The worry still is the other one is almost 10 feet but only 16 feet from i think you're going to see it well wait it's 16 from here it's going to be at like 30 from no, here no, i'm worried about right. the front okay i'm worried about the yeah. hall yeah okay i don't think you're going to see it that this is so narrow it's a very narrow street yeah you can't yeah. get yeah. i don't think you're going to get back far enough to uh, He's going to put ivy on it anyway. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah. So the tree <laughs> covering up just. Well, it's there. you know it, it's not too far fetched. I mean, because the green grids, um, as I describe them, they, they are thin. They do offer some that are thicker that can support different types of uh, planting. But it, it wouldn't be far fetched to you know, you know to sort of embellish the vertical face <clears> of that <throat> stair with with uh, something that could support. Uh, something that it emerges. I love from the whole the idea of what you're doing with the deck and the grass, and I mean the green and all that. I just don't want to see that big stairwell poking up when I'm walking down Vaughan Mall. Okay, Margo. Um, I'm supportive of the project. I would su um, second Martin's comment about that stair. Um, it it's very utilitarian right now, mm -hmm. and I think if you put um, some flare on it, okay. simple. But a little bit of interest for those people who will have a bird's eye view, because you'll have a few neighbors who might enjoy looking at something other than a utilitarian box around your stair. But other than that, I, th I think that uh, I can fully support this. I would just like a little bit of imagination addressed there. Yeah. Um, we could make that a stipulation that he has to come back with a new yeah. design <coughs> for the stairwell. We'd be happy to do that if a, a, a administrative tentative administrative approval for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to open this up now. All right. Anybody in the public uh, like to speak about this project? Anybody want to speak that's online? Just raise your hand. That's a no. That's a no. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to close this public hearing and I'm looking for a motion. <clears throat> I'll move to approve as presented with the stipulations that they come back uh, following appro approval of the stairwell. And Margo's also, um, I mean, um, Reagan's comment about the. The, the yeah, infill the, the, um, how about I try reading it? You want, want me to read what? Yeah, I please. That uh, the gable end and the elevator roof structure, aka the clubhouse, uh, <laughs> uh, shall be infilled with roofing material to match the gable on the main mansard roof structure. Number, I, I got that as number one. Number two, <coughs> I had um, you. Either you do this or you don't. Extend the roof over the egress door with some supporting brackets. You didn't say that, but uh, something. That and then number three. Okay, number three. Uh, submit for redesign a stairwell de stairwell design, a final stairwell design, or updated, revised, whatever. Okay. That um, you know it, it considers the aesthetic. Uh, impacts of the Vaughn Mall as discussed. Yes. Both volume, trellis, whatever. All right. Second. Second. Um, and purpose of intent, uh, conservation enhancement of property values um, and compatibility with design of surrounding properties. Very good. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. You have your approval. Can I request a five minute break? Certainly. I was going to suggest it myself. <laughs>
are we? 28 now? Newcastle. Okay. Yeah. Petition of Susanna and Kimmery Poldrack. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. Oh. You're saying it correct. Kimmery Poldrack. For property located at 28 Newcastle Avenue, wherein permission is requested to allow exterior renovations to an existing structure. New siding, windows, doors, new front stairs, and new rear deck. And new construction to an existing structure add a one-story addition over the existing first floor footprint as per plans on file in the planning department said property is shown on assessor map 101 as lot 34 and lies within single residence b in the historic district would you please introduce yourself please yes hi i'm leah mcgavern i'm the architect representing oh. uh, kim and Aaron. welcome thank you <clears throat> Um, so, as, as you just described, um, this is a renovation of a 1913 house. It's a modest house. Uh, you see there's this sort of the front cube um, in the original structure, the front cube with the uh, what, a porch that has been considerably mucked with over the years. Um, I think the house was added on to probably sometime in the 70s in the rear with a fairly large rectangular addition, which is... I think even a little bit bigger than, or about roughly the same size as the existing footprint at the front of the house, the original house. Um, and that's just a one story with um, a simple gable roof at the back. Uh, so what we're, we're proposing is a full renovation of the whole house. Um, we're going to strip off um, all the old vinyl windows uh, on the entire house. Uh, remove all the vinyl and aluminum siding on the original house and at the back. Um, replace it with, um, replace all the windows with um, Marvin Elevate with simulated divided light with a spacer bar in between. Um, so all, all the windows in the whole house will be replaced with those. Um, we'll be redoing all of the siding um, as you see in the images, in the elevations and in the perspective drawing on the cover. Um, we're going to be opening up the porch. We don't know what it looked like, um, but we would like to think it looks something a little bit more like this, sort of an early craftsman style. Uh, we're, the stone pillars are actually um, mimicking the stone foundation on the original house. So hopefully we'll have some stone, be able to find stone that we can match uh, to, the, to the foundation. Um, the stairs are new because the stairs that are existing are really old and dilapidated and and not terribly nice. Um, the, the window locations on the original house are all staying identical with the exception of two windows. Um, and if you care to see which windows those are, I can direct you to the elevations um, to look at those. Um, the rear addition on the second floor really just follows the footprint <laughs> of uh, the 1970s-ish addition. Um, it's just going up one story, and then the roof forms that we use um, mimic and follow the slopes exactly of the original house. Um, we have tried to indent a little bit where they, where the rear addition and the forward addition connect, just so that we can see a separation of the structures. Um, I thought that helped define the original structure of the house with greater clarity and helped separate it from. Um, what could otherwise be a rather bulky, boxy addition at the back. Um, and I don't know if you would like to go through particular details. You've all seen the drawing, so you may have questions. Um, otherwise, unless there's any more information you'd like me to present, um, I'm, I'm happy to respond. Um, the one thing, my comment initially is that um, this is a lot more complicated than you are making it seem. Um, okay. There's an awful lot of detail, and um, I'm wondering why this is not um, a work session. I don't know. This is a uh, isn't over fifty thousand dollars. That was <coughs> no. They're not required to. No one's required to do okay. a work session, and what, if right. they feel comfortable coming forward with what they've got it, and we've had instances where we recommend they go to a work session at, at, because of the complexity or the choices that have been made yeah. so um, a lot of details around this um, indentation and uh, some sort of strange siding thing that's happened over the first floor and um, 
You know, I don't know about the soffits and fascia boards and window trim. The, the soffits, I don't know what you're referring to exactly, but the soffits are all, everything about the roof is original at the front of the house. Okay, so it's original. Yeah. So what is And the original? porch roof is original. And the porch what? at the side actually is very close to what was built in the 70s. It's just um, made to be a little bit more in accordance with the stru original structure. You know, yeah, I'm sure that, you know, your addition will, will um, be better than what they did in the 70s for sure. I have a question. Yeah, let's get um, some questions going. Yeah, uh, have you done any um, exploratory sort of uh, searching to see what might still be underneath the siding? Do, is, is there any original siding, clapboards left underneath the, the there siding? There are some, I believe they were shingles. Oh. Okay. Original um, shingles, and we did discuss keeping those, and we would be open to keeping them if, as we did more exploration, uh, we found them to be in good shape. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I would love to see that certainly if you have, whatever you find from the house that is part of its original design, right. mm -hmm. I mean, I would certainly love to see that being restored rather than a new siding arrangement um, being put on here. So like the this vertical siding thing that's happening between the upper and lower stories um, is something that I don't think I've ever seen mm. in our historic district. So I, I wouldn't want to see that because it just mm -hmm. seems very out of place. So I think, you know, the simpler, whatever the original sort of scheme is, I think would be um, what I'd love to see. I would love to, th I would hope that maybe even as you're peeling away the porch, you might find some of the... Oh, I don't think so. No, is it totally... I. No, I mean you can. If you look at the images, it's it's pretty much vinyl windows all around the perimeter. Sure. Um, I was just wondering, you know, if, as you peel it away, any, is any of the structure going to help you understand how, what it might have looked like originally? Um, mm -hmm. That sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, like the introduction of sort of stone pillars there. I would think that this building probably just had very simple um, columns. It, you know, it, like it a, does. Like it a, does have a pebble stone or a, a beach, a river stone foundation, foundation to it, and that's sort of you can see where she takes off yeah. with that. Uh, this it, this drawing that they've produ produced is a very solid arts and crafts sort of uh, representation. Uh, it's it's a little bit, a little foreign for Newcastle Ave. Right. I think you're correct. In I, I, that and up. I I think I mean, I would almost. The surrounding that sort of area is a little bit more um, uh, colonial revival, four square type, you know, classical revival, rather than the Craftsman, which seems is more happened more in the west end of Portsmouth. Um, so I would. Although, yeah, if you roll back just a bit, right across a public walkway to this building, just to the left of it, as yeah. you look at it from the street, um, we've done. A very similar reinterpretation of a very similar house right there that has many of the same features the uh, uh, underground or below ground uh, parking and the uh, uh, decks reaching off the back uh, it's it's a in a sense it's a derivative house other than I think what at least my point in this thing is is the uh, vertical board siding I, I think that the introduction of a third kind of siding, while many of our arts and crafts buildings in Portsmouth have, or even a little bit earlier buildings have, sometimes two different kinds of siding, clapboard and shingles above, sometimes shingles with those old-fashioned skirts on them. Uh, it's not uncommon to see this in some parts of the newer parts of town, but I think the third element, particularly with the board and batten, is kind of a departure. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, I think that redoing this, peeling everything off and, and giving it new life is, is great. I have no problem with the um, massing of the addition. I don't know if anybody else has ideas on that, but you know, it, just looking at that simply. Um, uh, the, the peak, uh, does, the, does, the, does that rear roof need to be quite is so tall? Um, or is that just part of the rendering that makes it look very 
Well, that is literally just if you take the same pitches and 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 put them together. That's just where they meet. Anyone else, Martin? Uh, yeah, I, um, some of the comments I agree with. I, I I think there's a lot to like here. I, I you know, I think it's very appealing what you're doing uh, by restoring this house. Uh, I too would not go for the uh, board and batten. I just don't think you need it. I, I think uh, um, you have enough going on. You're introducing some elements that are they're new. Um, I could live with that. Um, I, I almost see like a fourth when you look at the glue between the two prominent roofs. Uh, that's almost like a fourth siding. Um, I would. So I would eliminate the board and batten. I do like the massing. I like the fact that compositionally they 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 uh, complement themselves each other, and so um, I do wish this was a a, uh, a work session um, because I think that it's a lot to take in uh, in a few minutes and and really uh, get behind. But. Um, like I said, there's a lot of good things with this. I just think there are a few things that could be adjusted. Thank you. Um, I would just like to point out that really the only, if you go back to that elevation, actually, um, Nick, because that's helpful, the only new part of that is literally that right there that um, is being circled right now. The rest of it is all existing. Um, the only thing that we're doing is changing out windows on the um, section below, which is the, the 70s edition. Otherwise, everything short of the siding, and I agree with some of your comments about the siding, and, uh, siding, and I think they're helpful. Um, otherwise, everything, if you go to the left-hand side, is all or original with the exception of the siding and the color. Um, I'm sorry, is, isn't the door moving? If I, when I walked around the house, yes. it seemed to me the yes. door is moving to the left. Yep, yep. Yep. And actually, th those were the two. There were two windows and the door that I would wanted to point out that are the things changing. Um, the door is moving to the left, and the window to the left of it is new, and the window above it is shifting about a foot. Those are the only changes happening to the exterior of the original house, besides the, you know, cleaning up the porch and um, chimney. The chimney Truncating the, the chimney, you mean? Yes, no, that's that's again part of the '70s edition. That that chimney was built in the '70s. Yep. Yeah. So one of my questions was, why are you leaving the bottom part of it and subsuming the upper part? Is there a structural reason you need to keep that? Um, well, they're gonna they're gonna use it and put a gas insert on the inside, um, so they're gonna vent out through the back, uh -huh. and then it becomes a dilemma: Do you build another ten feet of chimney to get it above the second story addition, or then, or do you bring it down and cap it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll have a um, a mushroom, for lack of a better word, uh, vent, gas vent coming out the back of the chimney. Yes. Through the bricks. Yes. At the rear of the house. Well, I, I'm just going to continue on with um, the thought that um, we don't see any details for the fascia boards. You're saying that they are original on the house. Um, it's all existing. I noticed the house, yeah. is, excuse me, has gutters all the way around it. Um, so that's something else we need to know that you are, if you're putting flat boards facio with um, gutters on it, then um, that's almost one thing because that K-style gutter does almost look like a crown molding in a, in a way. But um, I'm not sure we have details on the porch that um, goes, you know, the type of rails, et cetera. I don't know. There's an awful lot here. I'm kind of looking for the pleasure of the board. Yes, Rich. Ah, thank you. And thank you for this presentation. Um, but I kind of agree with the consensus that there are a lot of details missing, um, mm -hmm. like the okay. vent you just mentioned coming out of the chimney. We wouldn't have known unless we just mentioned it. Um, the materials and stuff like that, all those kind of details are, are, are important. Um, and we'd want to get this right for you. And I do like what you're doing. I think it would be a great improvement. Um, 
you know, this is a very prominent, it's right on that path that I know a lot of people enjoy in Newcastle Ave there. Um, but yeah, I just don't, I just don't know if this is a complete application with all the details that we would like. Um, that's what I'm, that's just my, right now. Well, so other people on the board, yes, Martin? I, I would just add that not only that, it's material selections and things like that we would be looking for. Um, that would be part of a, a public hearing application. So this is a huge transformation of this home. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know you're advocating strong uh, to get approval tonight, but I just I'm, I'm thinking that and we should probably look at a little further information before we commit. Sure. Let me just be specific. I mean, because I, I have specified um, the railing materials, the siding materials, which I understand you are recommending some changes to, um, as well as uh, roofing materials. Um, and windows. I'm just curious what material information might be missing. Uh, mahogany and wood balusters and rail. Yep. Um, well, you do have ore on some of these, painted cedar or hardy plank. Uh -huh. In yep. some cases you have PVC or painted um, MDO. So okay. we yep. ha you have options you've presented to us. Do you want us to tell you what we want? I would or? very much like to hear your preferences, yep. Um, so uh, I would say cedar, um, and I'm not sure why you would go with MDO or, or panel, um, but I'm not a building expert. Somebody else who is might opine. Um, but we do prefer to have natural siding wherever possible in the district. Okay, good. I would think we need doors. Windows. You have one. Window, you have a window schedule. Yes. Roofing material. I have no problem with the MDO. What kind of garage doors? What kind of uh, are are you using a cultured stone? Um, the railings. All these little things that are should be part of a final application. Did I miss anything? No. I mean, that people can, often just copy the spec sheets. And attach them just so that we see what they are and sure. circle the color or, or whatever it is. Um, yep. yeah, what so is above the uh, doors on the back deck where the chimney is? A trellis of some sort. A shading device. I don't know, A12? Yeah, right here. Yeah, what is that? Some sort of pergola-like material? A cedar cedar pergola trellis, if you will. Not very deep, right? No. No. It's the depth of the chimney. Mm. <clears throat> okay. So, so we do need more details. Yeah. No, I mean, I think overall this is, everybody thinks this is great. We just need some more details. And maybe, um, so we can continue this to next month. And if you want to come back with... Um, yep. Maybe a different rendering of the of the siding, sure, and yeah. just some more of those um, details, calling out specifically. You know, even I, I know John is concerned about the the soffits and eave details, and even just calling out, you know, to match the new stuff is going to match sure. yep. the original um, uh, decking material, the front porch, and so I assume there'll be a ceiling in that um, porch ceiling material, ceiling material for that front porch. Yep. Um, yep. You probably should also select a replacement uh, brick for the main, the chimney in the main block of the house because it's not going to survive being re-roofed. You're going to lose it. Oh, right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you know it's junk. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. So we continue this. Motion to continue. Yes. I move to continue this to next month. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I got the name right. Didn't I? All right. So this is petition of Ryan and Karen Baker, owners for property located at 44 Gardner Street, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure. 
enlarge existing sunroom with walkout deck space above. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 103 as lot 42, lies within general residence B and historic districts. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. I have to recuse myself. I got in a buttered notice on this. Certainly. All righty. Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Ryan Baker. I'm the new homeowner of 44 Gardner Street. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'll go into some detail. Uh, my wife and I, uh, Karen, purchased the property five months ago in August of 2022. Uh, this application probably looks familiar to some of you because the project was approved by the ZBA and the HDC in April of 2020. Unfortunately, the approval expired earlier this year, which was April of 2022. Uh, that being said, we're resubmitting the application to construct a sunroom for a slash four season porch, which will replace the existing porch. And this new sunroom will provide rear access from the yard and the driveway. Um, we have made some um, changes to the plan so that we can make the most of this addition slash investment. And the changes that I want to highlight are the roof deck on top of the sunroom placement of the exterior stairs, which have been moved over to the left instead of being on the right-hand side to enter the back, and a uh, skylight on the third floor. Um, in the packet that was submitted, I have also included some pictures of other porches, roof decks, within a few blocks of our home. Uh, we feel like this is a great use of space and will give us access from our primary bedroom on the second floor. Um, in addition to the roof deck, we, have, um, we would also like to install a skylight on the third floor. The skylight would add a tremendous amount of light because the sun comes up in that direction um, to the living area, and I hope you'll approve this change as well. Um, I want to point out that when I look out my third floor bathroom, which faces um, uh, towards Saunders Fish Market, I can count about 13 skylights. Uh, that's not including the two that are currently on our garage. Um, so it, it, I believe it would fit in well with the neighborhood. Um, all that being said, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have and uh, would dive into uh, any of the questions about the design. Well, I'm still getting the lay of the land here. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. Um, I'll just start with, I can't quite identify where the skylight is. Um, it is on, so it's on the upper right-hand side. In that picture, um, if you look, you can see the sloped area on the left, and then on the right, you can see the skylight, which would be in, ah, line, okay. in line with the windows below it. All right, got it. And that room is, um, you know, it's fairly steep pitch. Well, it's not, not that steep, but it's, it, it has one window in the room and then a little porthole that looks straight out towards the, you know, towards the river. And um, it's, it's pretty dark. And I think it'll make a dramatic change to that room and, and uh, certainly um, you know, be able to actually see in that direction as well would be useful. Okay. So, I, is, yes, Reagan? from what I can rem remember from this project a couple years ago, really everything is happening in the back. You're not doing much at all to the front of the house yes. for most people can see it. So, um, yeah, I remember seeing those two little views in the back. Um, but, I mean, I don't see much difference from the previously approved design that would make, um, yeah. that would, you know, gives me any pause. Um, you know, I think the roof deck, I, you're um, proposing to use just wood railings, right? Yep. We can't find that. Yeah, we would keep cedar yep. siding, same materials that are on the house currently. <clears throat> um, yep. And if you look at the existing on the left hand side of that picture you'll see there's a window there that would change to a door to come out on the roof deck and that was is the the primary bedroom right there and i always look out that window and say boy wouldn't it be nice to walk out here <laughs> and i think it's a really good use of space as opposed to just kind of a you know a, a roof that's pitched there I'd, I'd love to be able to go out and sit out there and actually looks towards the wentworth gardener which you know half the year there's not even anybody there so um, I, no, I, I can support this. I think this is all an improvement and in line with, you know, the, the general outline of the house. Well, we are losing, and there again, it's 
We are losing a porch post. We are, lo lo you know, we're, we're losing the original roof of the porch. That's what it is. Obviously, that deck that it sits on is new, I think. Yeah. The porch post, um, um, that post right there on the left that's existing, yes. the porch actually extends further yeah. out, and the porch post supports the roof above. And I don't even know if there's anything under the post. No, so it needs not. help. <laughs> like the porch, that those stairs, when we bought the house, probably th three weeks into it, the stairs that attach to the current porch just disconnected and it just dropped. <laughs> so it was a good welcome home present when yeah. I started to jack it up and tried to like reconnect it. So the porch needs replacement no it matter does. what happens. Okay. No, I totally agree. I'm just mentioning, you know, this one thing that yeah, is um, for sure. a historic component of the house. Um, obviously that porch was underneath was ill-constructed and, you know, not properly supported yep. and probably done on a sly on a weekend or something. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Most likely. Should have seen what was underneath it. Uh, well, I have seen that out. sort of stuff before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyone? Yes, Mark. I, w I would just, uh, part of my concern is that the rail that makes your roof deck now it looks like it's only about 28 inches, 30 inches high. I, I don't think that's going to be a code acceptable rail. Um, so you might look at that. Um, the, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of missing some details here that, that we were just talking about with the last application. Um, mm -hmm. Those details being rails, um, you know. Um, being stair rails, decking, things like that. So um, I would like to see some of that, I would think. I mean, I can, I can easily put that in. The, the only, I took the existing, the plan that was provided to me from the homeowners, and I just modified the, basically the top and the stairs. So I, it's exactly as was presented before and all the materials, and there's a, you know, everything that I had. I can easily change the height to make sure that that's to code. Let me look again. I mean. 36. Windows there. Yeah, I, I don't see any rail, rail details. I I think the porch is a new, uh, something you're modified from the last approval? The what? No. I think maybe in, in your in your cutting and pasting, you might have left a few things behind that yeah. Ann Whitney would have included with her original package, like the details of the the materials and the heights of the balustrades and so on. So it's probably in your package somewhere. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Ann would have included that. It's your fault if she didn't. <laughs> yeah. oh. I don't remember them to be totally honest. Caught again. I just remember this one that says painted wood rails and posts. That's all I remember. And yeah. I definitely kept that. So that I knew you guys vague. that was important. That's too. rather vague. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we need details on that. Um, there again, the porch uh, decking, mm -hmm. um, the door. The door's in there. Well, oh, the door is in there. Yep. Excuse me. Make it a stipulation. Trim around the windows, new windows. That's probably about it. I think. Windows are there. Yeah, windows are there. I would match yeah, exactly what decking the material windows. around the windows that we have now. So, how would you suggest we? The decking and railing system details shall be submitted for administrative approval. Yes. Okay, so you'll have to bring those details back. Just for the decking and railing. Okay. I think we can stipulate that the new, new construction trim, window trim, everything matches what is existing. Got it. And this just doesn't look like an Ann Whitney drawing. It's not her writing there. But. All right. Okay. So anybody in the public like to speak uh, on this proposal? 
raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Okay. I'll close the public hearing and look for a motion. I move that we approve this application as presented with um, the following stipulations. Two stipulations, that the decking and railing system details be submitted for administrative approval. And number two, that the new construction trim shall match existing. New construction what? New window trim. New yeah. New construction yeah, window trim. Well, window and door trim. Window and door trim. You know, for the, the new addition. We have a second. Second. All right. Um, um, discussion? Sure. This um, has conservation and enhancement of property values and um, has compatibility of design with surrounding properties. All right. So, uh, everybody who's uh, in favor of this, say aye. 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 Opposed? I have your permission? With knowing the fact that you do have to bring these couple details back to Nick. Sounds great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Ryan. Have a good evening. Mm. Did you already announce that 65 Washington is not no. here? They're going to continue? No. I missed not. that. We did not do that. that. No, we okay. So we only have one left to work session. But announce that. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, isn't it not on there? Request did to postpone. Did he know? Request yep. to postpone. It's yeah. next. Yeah. Strawberry Bank. So do that. Where's the book? I see it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, need a request to postpone a petition of Strawberry Bank Incorporated owner for property located at 65 Washington Street. So moved. To the next meeting. Second. In February. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And then we have a work session requested by Christopher Daniel Fruen, owner for property located at 37 Prospect Street, where permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure. Add separate first and second floor additions as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on the assessor map 141 as lot 16 lies within the general residence A in historic district. All right. so I will be recusing myself from this recusing. application. All right. I have some Good additional evening. material. We're going to come down there. Hang on. We're going to come down there. Yeah. And you can sit there. Oh, we all yeah. sit together? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I, have, I don't have copies for all. These are some uh, details on materials, doors and windows. This is a copy for Nick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'm Dan. Dan Freund. Uh, I'm Dan Freund, uh, owner, resident at 37 Prospect Street. I've owned the property for the last 16 years. Uh, and it has been my dream to enhance the property ever since I took ownership of it. So um, this is, uh, this is, Perhaps my my uh, not my lifelong dream, but certainly my dream for uh, continuing to reside here in Portsmouth. When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Um, Your dreams will come true. Well, let's uh, figure out how to get to yes. There we go. Uh, so uh, my uh, my plan is to uh, uh, the. The existing structures need replacement. Uh, the existing carport uh, is in a very rundown 
uh, condition and needs replacement. And my proposal is to create a uh, uh, greater flow between uh, the existing barn and the house by bumping out the um, uh, structure between by about five feet, so adding footprint of about five feet inside the yard, uh, and adding about 10 feet of second story uh, to the extension uh, from the barn, which would accommodate a um, stairwell as well as um, uh, so, uh, second floor bathroom. Um, before we ask questions about that, are, are you making any changes, upgrades, replacements, repairs to any of the other parts of the buildings, or are we just talking about the, the new construction? Uh, we are just talking about the space between the, um, the <coughs> existing kitchen and the barn. Okay. Uh, and uh, the I have a, a proposed a shed dormer which would extend over a uh, a third of the existing barn and your property is very convoluted so could we put some vocabulary down the structure in the back that you're putting the dormer in you call that the barn yes okay and then right in front of that is a single story original garage perhaps it's, uh, it's not an original garage okay. but it is uh, I refer to it as a garage extension okay. it's got a, uh, a an existing garage door mm -hmm. uh, and really doesn't serve much purpose other than a, a shelter and it is very convoluted so just, just so we all know what we're talking about. So they have the barn, and then in front of that is a single-story garage, and then in front of that is your carport shed roof. So Correct. from the uh, from the barn, uh, moving forward to the street, there's the garage extension, there's the carport, mm -hmm. and then between the um, that garage extension and the house is a mud room. Uh, and so that will be included as well. That will be pushed out uh, to accommodate uh, the added footprint. And the, the house proper is a rectangle, onto which in the back was added uh, a shed, like a shed addition almost. Yes. And then the area you're talking about spans between the back of that addition and the garage. Correct. Okay. And so it's really that space that's spanning between the shed addition and the garage, and the area over the garage, and a little bit of the barn coming forward, that's the subject area right That's the subject area, as well as replacement uh, of the, the carport. The carport, okay. And the carport is literally going to be the exact same shape and size? Yes. Okay. Um, great. Did that make sense to everybody? Because yeah, it's, it's very convoluted yes, thank you. And, and kind of weird. Okay. Okay, so we can all go home now. <laughs> well, right. it just, I think it just made some of some of the <laughs> render, some of the schematics I, are a little bit difficult to understand. Yes, and I understand that, page. yes. I mean, the, uh, yeah. you know, the carport, and the, you can uh, see the yes. barn. And, back there. and I just, the plan is very tiny. Maybe next time have it. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, the only difference with what I handed out today was uh, um, on the plan that I originally submitted, the barn looked like it had clapboards, uh, but I want to retain the, uh, the shakes. So that was really the only change. Do you have another handout? Uh, I, this is... Uh, we can share. So um, when I'm trying to envision what, what I saw on the property, the, the barn part makes complete sense to me, that you have a standard barn, you're putting a little dormer in it. The dormer starts, it doesn't run the full length, it starts a Correct. good way towards the street. Yes. And then you're extending the barn towards the street. Does that extension cover completely the existing one-story uh, garage or is it a little bit shy? I am trying to keep it shy uh, just to allow for some more balance between uh, 
the new barn structure and the existing house so that they're not so close together. Uh, and and that uh, roof plane is, is running this way if you're as you're looking at it from the street. Okay. And when you when you come this way along the back side of the house over that that sort of open area, how does it meet with this plane? Um, I'm 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 having trouble See, understanding. Yeah, that's, um, that's what but that that's before. I'm willing to admit that. <laughs> so um, so looking from the the backyard. Okay, looking from the backyard. Describe it to us from the backyard. Uh, so uh, the uh, the shed dormer will face the yard, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the connection between the house and the the barn, what I'm referring to as the mud room, will uh, uh, face the yard as well. Double open doors. Uh, and will allow flow into the backyard because right now there is no flow into the backyard. There's no, um, there's a door, but it is, um, it, it just doesn't, Where did you get it, it doesn't flow. Oh, you blew it up. So if double doors. Those are the proposed French doors in, in on the back of my proposed doors are in the, the uh, packet that I just um, I just handed out uh, three quarter glass um, similar to what is in the new construction at the beginning of Prospect Street. So this thing actually this connector mudroom would be with the doors and it actually projects out further than the small shed roofed addition that you have on the back of your house now. It looks like it projects outwards about four or five feet. Correct. And uh, that would allow that room to catch winter sun, uh, as right now there's uh -huh. no winter sun being caught in that room. And there is, um, it's a, a, an unfortunate corner inside there that attracts uh, rot. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, one thing I would be careful of is the pitch of that roof because you've all of a sudden made this this section go out further, four or five feet further. Um, so the roof will be become flatter uh, uh, so that it can sit underneath the, the the window, you know, up on the second floor. That might or might not be a problem. I don't know. Be aware of it. Yes, certainly. I, I, I think the rendering I'm missing and, and I'm, or I'm having difficulty imagining is the in backyard interior corner where the two structures come together. Is that? That is um, laid out. The very last page. Yeah. It's, that is. Um, you can see no, this, but I'm not trying the last to page. see the intersection itself. I, um, right? We know that. Yeah. Okay. I think I have. A2, uh, three, this thing. two, two, and two, three. I think um, this view uh, that we, we see here. Uh, it didn't. It apparently didn't make it into my uh, my last minute printing. So this view. Uh, the bottom is the view from the yard looking in to uh, the barn. The barn. It doesn't uh, depict the uh, the double door from the mudroom, uh, but yep. that too would be visible from this angle. So we we can see the the side of the barn from the backyard, and we can see the back of the house from the backyard. And I'm having to, because of the way your renderings work, where one is whited out in one and the other is widened out in the other. I'm having a hard time figuring out how those roofs meet with each other. And maybe John, because he's a builder, has figured it out in his head. <laughs> but I'm having a hard time you know, visualizing that is a, it. That is a, a, a significant problem that I am trying to address. Because okay. right now there are three competing roof lines yeah. between the garage extension, the uh, the carport and the mudroom roof. And so that too is a great big mess. Uh, and that is 
also. Now, uh, I um, I have uh, uh, proposed a uh, second floor walkout from the barn. Um, why not? Uh, why why not? <laughs> Walk out onto what? Uh, on on uh, uh, onto a, a roof deck, but on top of the mudroom, or on top, or directly in front of the the barn, uh, which would right. not. Isn't that where the carport is? The carport uh, uh, goes from further the, forward than that. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, the so there's a little bit of a space there. There's a little bit of a space. Uh, and um, I, where where the issue arises with that roof line is where the carport extends beyond the house, between the house and the garage extension, mm -hmm. and so it rises higher than the other roof lines. Uh, and I apologize for not having uh, an image to to show. Well, I think we really need. This like sort of should go 3D. Photograph. Yeah. And a sidewalk. Maybe yeah. a sidewalk is, is best this to is sort of I think a sidewalk around. would be the yeah. easiest just so we understand each other. And that's helpful. Yeah. 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 That um, oh, yeah. Nick has found something here that if we all turn around, we can. At least the existing conditions. So where's where's the deck be? <laughs> and I, I can provide well, video walkthrough or, or what have you as well. Yeah, um, we, we would probably all feel more comfortable if we could stand with the drawings in our hands in your backyard. Okay. I mean, not trying to get pushy, but that would resolve like that. You yeah, know, like yeah. that thing when you get your picture tube on, that's what will happen. be very efficient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, can I ask what the purpose of the program is? I, you going to open a hotel? Uh, <laughs> what, what are we trying to do? Um, I'm trying to enhance the the property to bring it in line with the uh, development in the neighborhood. Uh, I have aging parents, and I would like the option to have uh, space for them, uh, and that is the intent of the. So you want to bring other families to dwell in this building with you? Uh, I want the option. Uh, certainly, uh, if that becomes uh, a necessity for uh, my family. Is it kind of an ADU attached to Well, no, you? that wouldn't be. Uh, it, yeah. ADU, the difference between an ADU and what was just described, yeah. you could have as many uh, rel blood-related relatives living in your single-family home. There's no restriction on that. An in-law apartment, which we don't have, but you hear that term in other cities and towns, is essentially a separate dwelling unit with an unlocked door between the two units, so two kitchens, right? He's not proposing two kitchens. In Portsmouth, if you have two kitchens, you either need a two-family or you need an ADU. And an ADU can be rented to anybody. That's the difference between an ADU and an in-law. It doesn't have to be a relative. So you're not proposing either of those, but his parents could live with him in a single-family house and share the kitchen. Seems if he like wants to build two kitchens, he has to do the ADU. So then let's explore that. Yeah. Uh, what What is the nature of an ADU? If, you know, I, I wish to, to have a bathroom because that second floor... That's fine. That's the kitchen. That, the kitchen. Okay. That's how Bedrooms are fine. The city with the you fines. can have a twenty-bedroom house. You can have. What are limitations on having an accessory dwelling unit? We'd have to look at the code for this lot, and I can't tell you sitting here. But we can look at that. Okay. But that again is just allowing you to get the second kitchen, which is not a small thing. I get it. it it's nice to have that, whether they're in-laws or not. Uh, and 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 that would be desirable to me to have, say, you know, uh, uh, the way that I'm thinking through adding plumbing into sure. that structure would allow for, say, uh, a sink in that shed dormer, uh, which would give me the option. Uh, and you know, to be fair, this is um, uh, this this is. The development in that neighborhood uh, leaves me far behind in 
the the value of of my property uh, because it is in such a need of repair, uh, and because uh, those elements are frankly uh, present in other structures, other other dwellings in yeah, that okay. neighborhood. So you just have to look at the code. These yeah. folks don't do that. No, so we don't it, care it about that. So the only thing that you will be talking to me about is okay. whether, what do you need to do to put a second kitchen in the building? You can have as many bathrooms as you want, as many bedrooms as you want, storage rooms. Mm -hmm. You can do that as a single family home, which you have today. If you want to reprogram it or reposition it to have a second dwelling unit, then we've got to look at the code, but okay. it, it won't matter. And These that, folks and are concerned we, we about hear, the outside. We don't care about what you do on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we may personally care, but we don't. It's not in our purview. So <laughs> we only look at the outside. up above the garage? Come on. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I, what I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to make the comments I'm going to make without understanding your resources. So you know, if I suggest a talk in the hall, um, I don't mean to, to do that. But it seems to me that if I own this property, I would, and I were looking at what happened around, and I wanted to get a little more space, I think I would think, a little bit bigger and put a little more in even if it's a little bit of a reach to achieve what I think you say you want so for example I'd get rid of the carport completely and and do something bigger with the barn and that and the little garage thing get rid of the little garage thing completely pull the barn forward and if you want to have a place to put your car uh, to keep it out of the weather which it seems that's why you want to keep the carport give yourself a little one stall garage in the front um, but but that way you're kind of cleaning up the lines you'll make it easier to bring the two structures together um, it'll put in, and I'm not an architect but I think in the back corner you'd have more options if you had more substantial structures meeting each other as opposed to sort of like little hodgepodge things. Yeah. Um, you know, you could maybe even infill a little bit in that corner. You could get a beautiful sunroom. So I think there are lots of things that you could do with the property if you decided to have perhaps get rid of some of the property or some of the old buildings. And I don't think the carport and the one car garage are so historic that we're going to have a hard time with that. I mean, I'm not. I'm not, this is a work session, so I'm just spit, spitballing here. And then I think just doing some of the reciting and refinishing and cleaning up corner boards and putting a, a rail back, because I know your fence in the front has come down. I think just those sort of basic block and tackle things will make a huge difference in the value, appearance, and the comfort of your home. But that's my personal feeling and my priorities, which are not yours, and I'm not trying to impose them on you I'm just giving you some Thank ideas you. yeah and I, I appreciate the ideation on it um, I am uh, I'm I'm comfortable with the vision that I, I have and, and it has taken me quite uh, um, quite some time to uh, warm to the idea of adding stairs in the front section of the barn um, and forego trying to work stairs into uh, the existing structure, which would require cutting out beams, and, and I just don't want to do that. Um, and, and primarily, uh, adding stairs uh, is the reason for, uh, for pushing, pulling the, the roof line of the existing barn forward. Uh, is to accommodate those stairs. Um, I um, and and like I said, this has been a a 16 year dream of mine, and uh, coming to uh, even to this table is a significant step for me. Uh, and uh, I, I I feel that that the you know. My intent here tonight was to not come up for an approval, oh, no. but to uh, to really get to take get my notes to understand what I need to do to um, to satisfy your concerns uh, and to still hold some integrity with that 
that house, that structure, because it's it's a, a beautiful frame. It's a 230-year-old frame, and granted, somebody ripped out all the masonry, and somebody cut off a corner post at some point, but, you know, um, that's, that's long in the past. Um, but the, the structure as it is, is rather appealing, and it will, it'll be a big project for me beyond, um, uh, it, it, it will be a, a labor of love and sweat and, and, and my own equity put yeah, into it. It's going to turn in to be a big project. Are you also uh, looking at extending the barn forward as um, a non-conforming? How's that going to work on the property line? Yeah. No, it's going to need variances. You're to do going this. to need variances. Yes, you know, and I understand you're extending that. extending a non-conforming structure, as well as actually putting the dormer on it, too. That's, uh, the dormer is uh, on the inside of, uh, of the lot line. It's, uh, it's under 10 feet, if that probably isn't. It so is uh, it's probably over ten. It's over ten. Yeah. yeah. But you'll need it for the projecting elements coming yeah. forward. Is the tree yours or your neighbor's? Uh, the tree is my neighbor's, uh, and we share the cost in maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered how you were going to work. The whether the extension of the barn forward was going to run into the tree. Uh, we have uh, we have work scheduled uh, on that that um, that tree. Yeah, um, frequently when the trees are that close to the project, you can, obviously you'll be cutting through a lot of roots. And, yeah. you know, um, things happen. <laughs> is that a silver maple? Uh, I believe it is a Norwegian. Oh, yeah. So it's invasive. You're going to lose that tree. Um, Don't tell your neighbor, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, did, any other comments or any other plans for this I, film? I, I've done some things, um, and, and you, obviously you're not me. Uh, and that's a great thing for you, particularly. Um, <laughs> but, but, and he's done some things. But uh, I... Even some of my well-heeled clients, I steered away from trying to rehab barns uh, for the, you know, that shoveling money into the whole sort of thing. Um, it seems like you have, we'll say, a, a building of, made of, or a site with seven different elements on it now, and you're proposing to put two more on. Uh, to capture some space in a barn that more than likely doesn't have much of a foundation, no frost proofing whatsoever, it wouldn't pass a blower door test to save its soul. And, and you're doing this for the hope of making your property as prosperous looking as your neighbors seems like a funny way to do it. It seems like a much simpler plan that was much more straightforward that utilized new materials all the way through would be a lot easier to accomplish for somebody that has been thinking about doing something for 16 years it just and that's why i asked what your program was about how in inherently this these particular spaces represented themselves in your program you never once said anything about how precious the barn was or george washington slept there or any of those things it's just space to you it, that's on the property line if it's only advantage is that it's on the property line and then grandfathered yeah. that i don't know that that's a great thing either yeah um and we haven't mentioned whether it is indeed a colonial barn or is it this uh is it made of is it stud construction two by no, four? No, it is uh, hand-hewn timber frame. It is. Yes. <laughs> I can see what Dave is saying. Would Would it be useful to have the committee come on a site review? Because sometimes getting someone like David to to look at how something is constructed, um, he might have some some insights for you um, on how some things can be done. I mean, John, what do you think? Um, what I'm thinking is that um, he should go to another board first 
before we get too wrapped up designing this for them and, and uh, uh, I, I'm going to jump in and say I, I think you need to do a site visit before you do that because it may be based on what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing the solution may be not to touch that thing uh, which would negate the need to go and get a variance uh, so I, I think it'd be worth putting eyes on that hand hewn barn because yeah. it may be if, if you're trying to expand this is just me uh, I can see a rear addition on that house and the removal of that single story shed on the back of the house and a two story form two and a half story form coming in not necessarily in the middle more like an L and you get two and a half stories of new construction tucked in the back create this courtyard with your little barn no variances and plenty of space and <coughs> I'm, I'm not understanding so the I'm looking look up here uh, if you, I'm going to point. Sure. Don't touch the screen. <laughs> Remove this. Build, yeah. did it. Build an addition here. See it into the house. Your, your gables are on the end. There's your ridge. There's your new L, two and a half stories, if that's what the house is. Two stories anyway. Leave that alone. Take this off. Take that down. You've got a courtyard here. That that's what someone would have done in my mind 100 years ago and 50 and now if you want to make that bigger. I mean, it, potentially you've gone over a lot of these different well, various put that in the, plans in with your architects. Yeah, I don't know could. if your architect has given you some other ideas. Uh, they, uh, all the plans have, uh, have relied on making use of existing structure as much as possible. Okay. Uh, and making use of of um, of the barn is uh, it, it. I mean, admittedly, if you come and do a site visit, I hope you'll overlook the uh, the clutter of the barn. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but uh, you know, m making that space more useful, more functional. Um, and uh, and and serving the the long term value of of the property is what so, I'm after. Uh, we I, sit here and do this month after month for those very same reasons, and and pardon me, but I think all of us uh, believe that we're doing it for a good reason. Um, and I think we'd all love to go and look at it and share for a moment your problem uh, and maybe put some fresh eyes on it with a little bit of experience. Yeah. I, I'd, we'd be, I'd love to do it. Okay. Love to do it. Yeah. I, I have no problem with you. And the you, clutter, you know. I mean, that's what I uh, like clutter. Yeah, I love clutter. <laughs> I, I think I, I, got I, I don't. I, I, yeah. I, I mean to, to I solve that problem. Okay. I, I just want to, um, well, David, both David and I, have a lot of experience. David has more experience with colonial structures, okay? But I've also worked on a lot of them. And one problem with the barn, as it sits all by itself on its own little foundation, which is probably just some rocks and things like here, but basically the whole post and beam structure, why it's still standing is because it moves, it can move. And if you have frost come in, the thing bumps up and the floor is higher, and maybe it'll go back down again. Well, it, it, it sits on a slab. It's on a slab? It it's looks a, like it's on up. It's on a slab, and, and someone at some point well, um, uh, pulled. Let's just forget that, but still. A slab <laughs> not four feet deep. Also no, no. A shed. No. But, sure. So then you go and put a frame structure on the front of it with modern construction. And then you want to put a dormer on top of that, and then you want to have a kitchen that's going to be halfway, you know, in between two worlds. Just a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble there. Well, let's go see it. Yeah. It's the the one-story addition that's off of the, the left side of the main house. Do you know when it was built? Um, I don't know when that was built. Would that be useful to know in terms of thinking about taking it off? It's on the left-hand side. The it's on concrete on the left block. Okay. 
So it's it, probably it seems relatively in, in, well, I'm old, in this century. <laughs> um, Last century. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Is that information out in, in here, or how, how do you know that it's on concrete block? It so is on go, concrete block. You go look block. at it. Yeah. That tells you. You go look at it. Uh, you sign using... away your right to <laughs> kick yeah, me off you your property when you put your application in. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm no, curious. I, I, went, I, I walked I, your property. Be, be, because, um, I'm sorry? I walked the property. Okay. Yeah. Because um, um, the um, the foundation work, uh, as you proposed, it would um, the the budget necessary for for uh, doing that. I've never even contemplated that type of um, addition to Tell the property. Got to be easier than uh, what you're contemplating. I, really, I would if you could get. Bob to meet us there, your architect, mm -hmm. and be around. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bob? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's, that's where he's got adapt design. Yeah. Um, when would you like to uh, um, schedule this? What are you guys thinking? Thinking of daylight? Yeah. It's got to be daytime. Uh, in the and most of people do work in the next two weeks. Now. Do we all need to go? I'm gone. Well, I don't, does anybody? I mean, I, I mean, I mean can we do it Monday seven. through Friday during the day? I was just going to say that I think Commissioner Adams and Chairman Wyckoff are, you know, certainly would. I could, be, well, I could go, during go, the day. Day. Uh, go during the day. Go during the day. Preferably notice. not yeah, between but. two and three on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Okay. So um, for seven, school pickup. Yeah, morning. that's. What? Seven thirty in the morning. Oh, uh, but yeah, I think help from this board isn't gonna is only gonna help your dream, make it more efficient, help you save money and time. I mean, um, you are admittedly scaring me, but <laughs> uh, yeah, but but you but get, I, I quickly get over that. You've been thinking all this time about how you're gonna start, and we are sitting here thinking how you're gonna end. Uh, and 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 they're two different things. Yeah. I started a five-year project one time. <laughs> Finished it yet? <laughs> yeah, I did twice, actually, but that's another story. It took a long time. Um, yeah, you, you know, I, I'm. Uh, this is a, a, a huge uh, leap for me, uh, even taking on this Best project. Kind. Best kind. Um, and my my ultimate goal, my how how did you phrase it? Uh, my my purpose for this is to add value to that property so that I have something that it, I can uh, hand to to my kids something that will allow all of us to continue to to stay in this city and to enjoy the fact that we're lucky enough to to live here because I do feel lucky to have that opportunity to be able to give that opportunity to them so um i am not so set in uh in my ways that i i can't think differently um so whenever we can schedule that that site walk i'm i'm happy to do that and to do it sooner yeah you know, yep. next yep. and again it's, it's a great historic house the barn sounds like it's going to be pretty historic too. So you know, I'd love to be able to retain that. It's a it's the street's a too, nice street yeah. to be on to do something like this. I, I think you got all of the pieces of this thing nailed together. Yes. It's just be careful of how much you allow us to design your project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I I do still hold that uh, that dream vision, of using using that barn of of having it at least. Uh, airtight mm -hmm. uh, and um, and making it uh, a usable space because it has so much potential for the types of uses that I want to use it. Um, Studio, playhouse, all, all exactly those things, yeah. um, and uh, and having it be comfortable is important as at well. Least, at least three seasons out of the. <laughs> You um, might abandon it in the dead of winter. I, I, I you can would, find ways to. Yeah. Insulate. Well, I, I removed the, the, flood, uh, wood stove. Ah. Mm. 
Um, Keep it from burning down. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and I filled filled that uh, in in the roof. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, do I communicate with yeah. you about yeah. uh, we'll scheduling? We'll try for next week. Okay. Motion to continue. Do you want to try and do yeah. something next month, or do you, you need a little more time to work with your architect? Go with February, and then we'll yeah. continue it if you're okay. Let's do that. Ready. Yeah. Motion to continue until February. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. What was your first time again? Sorry. I know